Hello, welcome. It's Hard Lord time. How are you, Bo? I'm so good. Wow. Wow. Me too. Who do we got? On the count on the count of this very special guest we have. The 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 house that that uh, that built Maggot Stomp, the the bricks that laid the foundation were a band called Sanguisugabug, and here we have Devin Swank, singer mm. uh, of Sanguisugabug, friend of the show, mm. finally made this work. Very excited. <laughs> How are you, Devin? Good man, living. Wow. Just came back from a tour. About to go on another one, so. Where where were you on? Um, so I'm in an, another band called Tomb Sentinel. It's like a the way I describe it, it's like a HM2 like beatdown band. Sick. And uh, okay. we did uh, two shows in Ohio, and then um, made our way down south. Played uh, Tennessee, Kentucky, and two shows in Texas, and came back. And then you know, I that. love a motherfucker that uh, does multiple bands, so. I, I I commend you. I, I appreciate that that there that there there's more of us out there, you know? Oh yeah, man. Lifers. How many bands are there between everybody in Sanguisugabug? Oh shit. Uh roughly. Yeah, I mean there's also a lot of like incestual things yeah. going on where it's like all of us in the same band too. So oh, I love that. Yeah, I would say probably Eleven or twelve? Wow, <laughs> that's not what I expected. No, that, I expected uh, like five, six five, tops, yeah. dude. What tour yeah. are you going to be on? Uh, we're gonna do the Chaos and Carnage tour with uh, Dying Fetus, right. Suicide <sighs> Silence, right. Aborted, Born of Osiris. Many tracks, yeah, <laughs> throughout across that that lineup. I have to imagine you're a big Dying Fetus guy. <clears throat> oh, enormous, man! Ever since I was. Uh, like 13 years old, and that's when I first uh, discovered him. Fuck yeah. So this is like the tour of a lifetime, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, the the Cannibal Tour, Oh yeah. Kinda, yeah. it was short-lived, but uh, <clears throat> Dying Fetus is definitely, um, you know, a bucket list band uh, for me. And, you know, they're also a band that, kind of like us, like never really took themselves too seriously. and. Mm. The music like speaks the, for itself, brother. They don't right, need to right. take themselves. Oh, yeah. You know? And then, uh, you know, they also <laughs> like to play, you know, odd oddball uh, tour packages, too. Like, you know, they they fit right in there with, uh, like, Knox Loose and Tear, like mm-hmm. they did that last right. year and absolutely ripped it apart. And Well, they, make the, they can make the tour fit around them, you know? Oh, yeah. If you ask them enough, they will play Epidemic of Hate for you privately at Soundcheck at some point, you know? Fuck, yeah. I had to beg and plead, but last day of tour, it was just me and Taylor in the room and them ripping Epidemic of Hate, and it was a, it was a very special moment. Hell yeah. How so just you, ask a few how times. How did you and, find uh, touring with Cannibal? I know it was short-lived, but... Yeah, um, it was uh, it was insane, man. I mean, I we we did a, we did a tour with another like bigger uh, death metal band, uh, Nile, and they were... Uh, they were a cool band to tour with, but they weren't really like personable. Yeah. They didn't like really give a shit to like hang out or really talk to us really. How could they? I mean they're mentally in Egypt? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> digging up doing archaeology yeah. to find them fucking riffs. Exactly. They don't they're have time to be snakes and yeah, like, exactly. trying to hang out. <laughs> but uh you know, um Cannibal was uh was down to hang every night. Dude. Which which was sick. They um, are by like by far and away the most professional coolest group the coolest band we've ever toured with yeah they i saw that so, tour they were I, so uh, awesome they were so cool yeah i was at the scully show what columbus. city oh in columbus yeah yeah yep. oh dude that small ass venue that yeah. was the one a little 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 taste of hard lore hit me uh so at the end of that tour was when pat had an episode and you know burned his house down it was that it was yep. two days after that tour ended mm. and we ended in Florida where like, I think most of them live and, um, throughout the tour, some weird, he, it, some weird behavior was going on that was just like noticeable. You know, I'm not gonna, I don't want to like drag anybody, but during, during that show, he was just like, it was like, he was forgetting he was playing. 
He would just like wow. miss, he would just like stand there and then like miss cues and like Damn. it was super super strange. I remember that show vividly because of that. Damn. Yeah. And and what's then crazy the is uh, I saw I saw Pat because um, he lives he moved back to Kentucky mm. after that, and um, I saw him at this like little festival in Cincinnati, and then I had some mutual friends, and he actually came by for a barbecue. And he said it was his first time picking up guitar since Cannibal. Oh shit! And we got to have like a little impromptu like jam. You jammed with him? That's cool. We got to jam with him wow. for a minute. Yeah. Did you? Did you tell him that with Eric Rutan at all? What's up? When you were Bye. with Cannibal, did you chill with Rutan at all? Oh, big time, dude. Yeah, he's the fucking man. He is the man, and uh, you know, like we have a we have a bunch of like mutual connections too, because you know we're everyone in Boggs cool with uh premonitions of war mm. you know and uh they toured with hate eternal and stuff too and i think they toured with morbid angel when he was in the band mm-hmm. so we got to like shoot the shit about some stories and do you guys talk hardcore at all because they're they're all, they're fully down who uh Rutan? yeah no we didn't they 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 uh it's funny they were listening to uh like charlie crockett like country and shit on the bus <laughs> could see it that's yeah. probably the real that what they're actually yeah, into but yeah. you know I, yeah i've told this story before but rutan told us i think we were in rich no not richmond virginia beach and he told us he was like man when perseverance came out man i listened to that every day man crazy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, so he, cool. he told us that he listened to it, to it every day for two years you have I'd, to persevere and you have to find a way to do it. So I, that, I imagine that, oh, was, for his, sure. that was his way. <clears throat> Devin, what came, what came first for you, death metal or hardcore? Oh, uh, damn. I would say metal just in, in general? general. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I found a love for uh, like metallic hardcore pretty, pretty early on. Um, you know, uh, it was cool. I was able to get into DIY shows at like a really young age. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I started going to shows at like 10 years old. So, uh, <laughs> my man, <laughs> yeah, I had a, I had a cousin that played in a band, um, from here in Columbus. And then, uh, I also have a, I'm not going to get too into it, but I had, sure. I have a family member that was in pit boss. Oh, so, whoa. <laughs> yeah. There yeah, you go. So you I, were born for this. Yeah, so I got to see like Pit Boss early on as a kid, and uh, yeah, uh, hardcore was like my first love. And I think what got me like into that transition from just standard metal into hardcore was like you know Slayer and uh, Sepultura, Crowbar. Of course, I really think Sepultura is like the ultimate bridge that was built between Absolutely. two huge worlds. They are they're 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 secret hardcore songs. They're secret thug. Every you know? single one, yeah. They're thug is fu- they're thugged out. I th- I think the same thing about uh, Sonic Excess by uh, Crowbar. Mm, you know that's uh, that's damn near like this close to being just a full on hardcore mm-hmm. record. Mm-hmm. Even with all the melodic stuff, it's yeah, it's like mo- yeah. It's melodic hardcore. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> the, the the betrayed to uh, yeah. Crowbar Sonic Excess pipeline is very short. And, and you mm. know, Kirk would be like, "Yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that sinking ships LP, man. That's <laughs> <laughs> huge, man." <laughs> um, what was what were the? Are you is Clevo is Clevo hardcore like your shit or what? Is love that your it. favorite stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Integrity, Ringworm, dude, the Worm, baby, the Worm. Yeah, and, Ooh, and Cold that Blood. Was, I guess if if you re- if I really think about it, Ringworm was my bridge. I found Ringworm before Sepultura. Hell yeah! So that was my bridge to be like, oh, like metal is cool, like mm. as like a strictly hardcore dude, you know. See, I didn't know <clears throat> what the difference was between yeah. any of these things. Fuck yes. Um, and Sepultura against was the first CD I ever bought. So it was just like oh, yeah. I like music. That was my vibe. Was like, I'm really into music. Like, <laughs> front horn up. Yeah, front um, wrist all the way back. Devin, how old are you? I'm uh, 28. Yeah, young man. Young buck. <laughs> young enough. Young you know? enough to party. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> Sang with Sugabog. Yeah, let's let's talk. Well, was what was your first band ever, and what did you do in it? 
Oh, damn. Uh, like, what was the thing where you were like, I'm going to start a fucking band, man? Yeah, I was, um, was 15 and, uh, I had two buddies that lived down the street from me. I grew up with, uh, name, their names were Cody and Cameron Carl. They were brothers and, uh, they had every instrument like known to man in their house. Their dad Conga, Maraca? everything. <laughs> Probably nice. Probably find those there. Okay. And uh, <laughs> one time uh, they they had a they had a metalcore band and their singer um, was like running late to practice and I came there just to hang out. <laughs> and uh, Devin, never, this dude's fifteen fucking minutes late, dude. Jump out, jump on the mics, show oh, us yeah. what you got. <laughs> yeah, I, I never, you know, I never did vocals or anything before then, and was just jamming and head banging and just like really feeling everything. Yeah. And like from there on, I was like, yeah, this is it. And yeah. I was already such a, a music nerd and, uh, you know, watching like, um, you know, like Dime Vision and like all the Pantera home videos and shit. I was just like, <clears throat> I want to do that. I want to okay. party and play in front of people. So the partying yeah. element was was, yeah. it, was the draw. <laughs> um, It was more so just like projecting energy out and making people absolutely lose their goddamn minds. Yeah. That's the element that I wanted to like really grab a hold on to. Same here. Yeah. That's not too different. No, that, yeah. The, just like, like eventually I, I figured out that was like, Oh, I like the violence. You know, that was the yeah. thing that I liked. But at first, like my, my initial like choice to sing in a band. The first band I ever played in was this band called Buried in Silence. It was like this dog shit metalcore band. But the first time somebody moshed, that was when I was like, I did it. This is it. <laughs> I found it. Mm. Uh, so I, I absolutely get that. Just the, remember, the, like a physical reaction to, to songs. It's crazy. I remember yeah. seeing a video of Corn, like when I was really young, like possibly fifth grade. Mm hmm playing like got the life to like uh, what looked like the entire planet and yeah. everyone was jumping and just like going crazy and i remember thinking like that's really cool i think that was my first like how did he of, make like, them do that yeah how do i yeah. do that <laughs> yeah and i've never done it <laughs> we'll, we'll but, get there <clears throat> james has <laughs> yeah james has. gets me jumping and hey, what was really crazy is you know like being a wage slave and using like vacation time to play shows or go out of town and, and tour. And it's like for one moment I'm in charge of like 200 people or however many people are there. And then I have to go back to work on Monday and be someone's bitch. Mm. And I was just like, I would much rather just like lose my ass and sure. try to be in a band as long as I can. Mm. I love that. And that's, and those are the bands that, make it work you know it sure. sucks that the the grind has to be that way mm -hmm. where it's like you but it, but it, honestly any job that's any creative field that's how it is you have to be Supp willing to sacrifice everything you got to supplement somehow you do Ugh. and or some <laughs> bands find the way to balance they, they get lucky and they can balance the wage slave thing mm -hmm. they can balance fucking wall street yeah, dude, and, that's uh, isn't that so funny that like it's the motherfuckers who are like, oh, I got into this coding thing like twelve years ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I got some stock options. Yeah, we're playing we're playing Fuck. Pittsburgh this Wednesday. It's fine. Yeah, I wish I was smart enough and paid enough attention to that kind of shit. Yeah, you you don't think you're a smart guy? Uh, I'm pretty pretty well, decent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could get by. I'd say I'm more street smart. I like that. I mean, I like the things you say while playing and lyrically. Hell yeah. I like what you've embraced, you know? Thanks, man. Yeah. Got it. Learn it, learn it from these guys. <laughs> Come on. Look at that. Well, I've never, I don't know if I've ever seen that shirt before. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't recognize that shirt. <laughs> I've never seen it. I love it. Can I um, have it? So before you joined the call, Colin mentioned something that I didn't know. It was the origins of the name. Mm -hmm. Let's talk. Wait, can I just say real quick that I think I can spell it from memory? Hell yeah. Let's hear it. S A N G U I S. I swear, I'm going to close my eyes. G U I S. Uh, U. <laughs> G A. Uh huh. B O G G. Nailed it. Yeah. Nice. And then, ironically, I can't God. spell tongues. 
Could yeah, challenges. Taungues. <laughs> I fuck. See, I like. I never imagined how many times in my life I'd be saying the word tongues. Mm. So I can only fucking imagine how you feel. <laughs> yeah. So tell me about the name. I know. Well, I, I have a point to bringing this up, but okay. Tell tell me so, about it. I'm curious. For sure. So, uh, for for like the first two years of being in a band, a uh, little like Easter egg for you. We kind of liked to fuck with people mm-hmm. about how the name came to be. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, our, our original guitar player, his name's Cameron. Um, the same Cameron Cody. Uh, no, no, Different not, Cameron. not, okay. it's weird. It's like, I knew him around the same time though. Okay. I met, insane. met him briefly. Like just a different Cameron and Cody. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Destiny. Yeah. Yeah. It's like full circle, <laughs> but, uh, the Matrix so, gave you the wrong ones. Oh, right. Cody and then, yeah, drums. The, Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. But, uh, but yeah, Sing with Suga is a uh, Latin term. So it means uh, a blood sucker. So uh, basically like a leech. And then Bog is like an older Slavic term, mm. um, which means like a divine being or a god. Okay. But, you know, it could also in like in English... Uh, like older English, like it means a toilet. Fuck yeah. Or a lavatory. So, you know, we were like a blood sucking toilet, but originally it was uh, a god that siphons blood and life from you. That's cool as fuck. Cool. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. hard. And it's a uniquely searchable thing. So Very like, true. That's, that is the most important thing with today. You know? You're not wrong. I, I yeah. literally only knew that it had to do with blood because of typo. Because of sanguine addiction. addiction. Yeah. So oh, yeah. the reason I ask is as someone who has been dealing with like the the really hilarious pun of harm's way protein oh since two thousand eight. We're going on fifteen years now of people thinking they're inventing this shit. Do you if you could, if you could replace your name, <laughs> would you do it? Be- oh no. Good. No, That's a good not. answer. But the reason yeah. I ask is because of all the fucking, you know, like Corpse Grinder saying uh, Samsung, yeah. Samsung Super Fatter, you know, like all that shit is like, ha 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 ha, you know. Yeah. It, no, I mean, uh, mm. I get, I get that it's, uh, I mean, just being in a public position, you're basically subjecting yourself to people all to point screaming. and laugh at you, you know. But Worst. at the same time, it's just like if the music's hard, the Band name's got to be hard to pronounce. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, and like you with the logo thing, everybody the the logo band is like the joke, but that's been a bit in in death metal for Ever. twenty years. Yeah, yeah. You just happened to be <laughs> the first band in a long time where like that bit worked. Like the whole point is like, yeah, it's illegible, so that you have to recognize it, and once yeah. you recognize it, you will never forget it. Mm. Yeah. You're you're the first man in a long time where that is, it is a recognizable logo, which is insane and incredible. Mm. For sure, so good job. Yeah, it's our it's our Chevy bow tie. You it know? is it is the Chevy bow tie, <laughs> and a lot of that comes down to just how you are, how good you are at memes. Oh, how'd yeah. you do that? You're dude? not wrong. You're a meme smith. Yeah, man. Yeah, I like to I like to uh, <laughs> make fun of shit. So, and I, I, what better target than the person I got to deal with every day, you know, me and my, my band. So sure. mm. is that all you? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Making them Actually memes? it is. Dude, yeah. You say you're not, you're fucking Columbo, man. You're telling me, <laughs> you're telling me you're not smart. You're a meme. You're a meme. Yes. You're a meme genius. dude. For sure. Memes. Yeah. Stradamus. I always looked at like, you know, like Eminem used to say, nobody can like riff on myself like better than me. Mm. so wow. I you know it, it was always like you know when the demo came out and it was just like it's crazy that this band's like getting this kind of notoriety off of four songs and it was two years later and then we dropped another song and I was like what now bitch we got five songs you know so <laughs> I like to I like to have fun with it and you know and it's like I could I could also like get in with the people that love us and I can also get in with the you know shit talking crowd and sure dish it back just to be funny. Let me I ask you that. both a question. Talking about memes, 
Let's go oh, off. Okay. Let's go off yeah. a little bit. I love Do you have it. a favorite meme template? Just like an all time, like if it's in this tap template, I'm gonna like it. Uh, Arms way re- dancing, man. <laughs> Running, man. <laughs> <laughs> For example, uh, uh, so I yeah, have mine what, off the top of my head. Yeah, what is yours? There was one that was going around of like Frodo saying to Gandalf, "All right, then keep your secrets." Oh, okay, mm-hmm. and yeah. like literally, it could be anything in front of there. Just like me losing a sock while doing laundry, right. <laughs> you know, me to my dryer. All right, then keep like kills me. Can't Mine would be um, the Trump "I'm gonna come" video. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one for me. Uh, that stressed out guy smoking. It's a big one. I like mm. to hit people with that. McConaughey smoking. Anybody dude, smoking? The McConaughey smoking out? one is incredible. I'm in, dude. Oh, Steve incredible. Harvey on the phone is like my signature Good. move now. I've <laughs> wrecked motherfuckers with that one. Yeah. You don't come at me with some bullshit unless you want Steve Harvey disappointingly looking at his phone. Because that'll <laughs> that wreck funny. you. I like, uh, I like the older Captain America saying i don't think i will <laughs> i don't think yeah. i will is amazing like people are saying like come to the show tomorrow night blah 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 <laughs> like, boom just fire it right off to him i don't that's think like i will solid one. that's a very good one <laughs> great question bo I, I love a good meme love, I love a laugh good meme. you know and so does Devin. yeah i love a good dad joke too <laughs> hit me with one. you got one for me you got any favorites i did one the other day where uh i was in menards which is like a hardware store and they were like, can I help you find anything? And I was like, yeah, a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, uh, man, you delivered. <laughs> I owe four. <laughs> there you go. There's an- uh, yeah, another dad hit you yeah. right back. Hey, You're saying they're all fucking day playing yeah. tennis, playing joke <laughs> tennis. <dude. laughs> Good for you, man. So saying with Sugabog rolls around. Uh, how did, was the demo... Like on Maggot Stomp? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, we hit up Scott uh, kind of right away, you know, because, like, we we were fans of, like, earlier releases before us, like mm-hmm. uh, Mortal Wound and, you know, Abraded. Yeah. And uh, we were like, this will fit. And as soon as he got a taste of it, he was like, yeah, this is definitely something I'd be interested in putting out. And, uh that grew into a badass relationship between uh, me and Scott. I love that dude. He he's, fucking rules. He, he's the man. Yeah, I've been working with him for 15 years at this point on various yeah. layouts or whatever. Mm. And Maggot Stomp came along and it was like, damn, good job, Scott. Uh, and I feel like it was Sang with Sugabog and 200 Stab Wounds that mm. were kind of, they were, they were the like, mm. What to, they are to Maggot Stomp, what like Harm's Way and Twitching Tongues were to the early Close Casket. For sure. Uh, yeah. I I'm, uh, yeah. I'm going to take credit to that too. I, I'm the one that showed Scott 200 Stab Wounds. Ooh. See? So uh, it's really you, it is the house that Devin built. That's right. <laughs> I've known, uh, I've known Steve and, uh, you know, Lance, who was previously in the band, mm-hmm. um, and Ezra. I've known them for uh, a while. You know, they, um, they played in a lot of hardcore bands. They played in a really cool thrash band that other bands of mine have like played with for a long time. And they were in a band called Subtype Zero. And we uh, played a few shows with them in Bog. And it got it got Steve wanting to do like a death metal project. And I was like, wow. dude, as soon as you. So not only that, not only did you show them to Scott, you you're the reason that they uh, I wouldn't, started. The I band. wouldn't give myself that kind of credit. <laughs> <laughs> Steve's got riffs, man. He's yeah. uh. Obviously, he's a king, dude. He's a real and um, sure. he was showing me it, and I was like, "Hey, dude, like, I'm gonna show this around if you're cool with it." And he was like, "By all means." Showed it to Scott, and Scott was like, "Yeah, this, this is it. This, this will do. This is exactly what I'm looking for." So, yeah. the rest is history, I guess. Yeah, and now you, like, this whole fucking new wave of hardcore influenced death metal is mm-hmm. um. It's a beautiful thing to me because it's, it's, I, there's nothing I, it, I get excited hearing something like Dying Fetus, like growing up listening to Dying Fetus, hearing like, yo, these guys like hardcore too. Like, mm-hmm. can you fucking believe that? Yeah. Like, yo, he's got a 25 to life sticker on his guitar. That's, that's crazy that he's heard <laughs> that. And now it's like my, 
my peers basically are the ones giving this new generation of of like a, a music fan, music listener, an honest version of that where it's like, yeah, this is you can hear our, this is my hardcore demo from two years ago. Now here's this fucking insane record. Yeah, uh, it's it's comforting. Yeah, and, and it's and cra- it's crazy because it's <laughs> you know it's not uh it's not really a new thing you know because no. uh bands in I'll give uh, New York and like Massachusetts like big Long ups. Island dude yeah Long Island especially yeah, yeah. pyrexia dehumanized uh, suffocation internal yeah. bleeding you know, they were uh. They also like influenced a lot of hardcore bands like Irate and shit too. Absolutely. So, and they love spin kicking, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. You're gonna yeah, tell me that those down. parts weren't written with the intention of a foot going <laughs> into a head? There's no oh, way. You yeah, fuck with spin are, kicking? We call it. We call it. We call them bad boy riffs. That's what I like. Bad boy oh, yeah. riff. Yeah, like that's that. all I like. Really, I never heard a good boy riff and been like, "This is dope." <laughs> I have. You definitely have. You some choir choir boys is that's good. That's some good boy shit for sure. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> what are you into, Devin? What's up? Outside what are you of, into lately? Outside you of know? music, what are you into? Outside of music? Yeah, yeah. What is Devin the guy? You wake up. What are you doing? Ah uh, man, I uh, I hit the gym. Fuck yeah. Uh, you know, I go out. I go at least once a day, <clears throat> and then. uh I'm also really big into uh, stand-up comedy. Really? You know, I watch, uh, wow. Yeah, especially yeah, um, uh, Big J. I've been obsessed with him like for the past couple of years. Violent J? No, no, Big J Okerson. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Jay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who doesn't love Violent J? But yeah, right. Big J, that's awesome. Do you have a favorite stand-up special of all time? Oh uh, yeah, I do. Uh, the day that laughter died, uh, Andrew Dice Clay. Mm. The dice. Good old, good old Mother yeah. Goose, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> I like, uh, you know Eddie Izzard. Yeah, yeah, I love Eddie Izzard. Uh, Dress to Kill. That one's a really good. The one. The first special. Yeah. Un- unbelievable. Like rattled my because it's like a lot of history shit. So it, like mm-hmm. it worked for me. <laughs> yeah, I went and saw Eddie at the Chicago Theater. Like. 10 plus years ago. Wow. It's badass. So it's excellent. It's like, I think that's the only stand up show I've ever been to. Oh, yeah. I might have the stockest answer of all stock answers. For Jerry this. Seinfeld. No. Richard Pryor. No. Eddie Murphy. Yes. Eddie Murphy <laughs> Delirious, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's the GOAT. I think. That's a good one. What's the Raw's Richard? really good, too. Raw's What's, great. Oh, yeah. Raw's great. What's My the parents Richard went Pryor to the Raw where tour. People are like leaving during the beginning. That's awesome. And he has to like wrangle them back. I think it is it live on. I don't know. Who it's knows? on Netflix. Who knows, man? Who knows? But it's on <laughs> Netflix. It's like one of his major like specials. And wow. people are like, there's like miscommunication. They're like leaving during the intro because they think it's over. Mm. And he's like, literally has to like, where are like, I'm here we go. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> That's it's sick. So, so you going to like open mics and shit in, in Ohio? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have. Wow. Um, there's a place uh, on High Street uh, called Barrel, and uh, I I would go there every Wednesday, and they'd <laughs> give me like five minutes, and then what they would do? Oh, you did stand up? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, what? Dude. Yeah, dude, you're blowing my mind. <laughs> now it was actually like uh, a first love for me. This was wow. uh, really was comedy. Yeah, uh, improv and uh, sketch comedy, especially. You know, Where did I, you uh, do improv? Same place, a barrel. They had they have, a. They have a school. Yeah. No. Oh, okay. It was just people. We were we were all in a Facebook group, and we would oh, just do dude, it on that's stage. Awesome. Yeah. You should come. Uh, I, so I did gr- Groundlings here up until oh, yeah. up until advanced, and then the waiting list was too long, so I, was, I dropped out. But did you? I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, that's I did. I'm so uh, quick I did the Comedy Cellar in, in New York. My first time out, oh, out wow. over there too. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Let me let me ask you a crazy question, Devin. Feel free to say no, but I beg you to say yes. Okay. Actually, just say yes. Don't say no. Would you Wait give us me. your would you give us your type five? Type five? Give us your type, type five, five stand-up routine right now, dude. <laughs> okay. I'll give you uh Yes. I'll give you I'll give you the one that that always 
does pretty well. But give me the finale. Give me the closer. Okay, I will. The closer. Will. Hold on, let me get this ready. <clears throat> no, I'm, I'm Don't you kidding. dare! I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh wait, hold on. Let me do this properly. All right, guys. Uh, we, we have uh, from Ohio. This guy sings in uh, Sanga Sugga Bugga. His uh, his name is Devin S- Devin Stank. Uh, he's coming in. He's gonna give us five minutes. Thank you up for Devin, everybody. So back when I was single, I uh, <laughs> spent a lot of time on Tinder. And, um, you know, I, anytime I'd get, like, horned up, I wouldn't pay much attention. I would just swipe right, not even wait for pictures to load. And uh, one time, I actually matched with my sister. Oh, no. And I was like, how, you know, how does that happen? You know, did, did she end up doing the same thing? Is she pulling one on me? So after we had sex, I asked her about it. <laughs> wow. That was pretty that's, good. <laughs> I you, ta- you, you, you that's took one from two, Hard Lord to uh, Kill Tony. Amazing, quick. dude. Two, <laughs> two huge boxes ticked there. You hit the, you hit the, the apps. You hit, you hit the, the zest, dude. Dude, not, not waiting for pictures to load is like, a palpable feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you ever done that, Bo? Me? Never. Yeah. No <laughs> way. Me neither. <laughs> so that was great. Thanks for that, man. Yeah, man. I'm yeah, learned, I've learned a lot. Mm. Chop full of them. I now I can t- now your 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 wit your stage wit and banter <laughs> makes makes a lot more sense. Kind of rounding out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I tr- I try not to do too much because, like, especially being on tour, like, you'll see the the local front man, like, talk between every song. And I'm just like, dude. No. Like, play play eight songs. Play them rapid fire. Dude, eight Get is, on like, with it. a lot. Local man, eight? Right. <laughs> Five top six, maybe. <laughs> don't, don't say a word. I don't like playing more than yeah. six. Don't you even know? say your band name. No, no, yeah. Just no. go ah, like, I'll, <laughs> song. I'll pl- I'll plug merch and <laughs> yeah, like other bands talk shit the to tour. the crowd and other bands. And other than that, it's all showtime. I love it, dude. But then you hit some 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 wacky mosh calls in there too. Every now, oh, and big then, time. You know? Yeah, you got a favorite one off the top of your head? Yeah. Um, I want you to crush up the person next to you and fucking snort them. <laughs> <laughs> Like dude, one, you man. got me. You're getting me. You're getting me left and right here. <laughs> Vogelisms, dude. They're yeah, fucking. That, dude, Scott King. Scott really changed shit with those, huh? Oh yeah, big time. It would be really cool, and if like vogelisms are like laconic f- f- phrases, you know, like passed down. He needs a book. He I needs, swear. Yeah, just a, a quote of the day calendar. Yeah, it'll he be. Needs- I swear, it'll be engraved on my tombstone. Move the fucking person next to you. Move well, the fucking one. God, Scott. <laughs> like, I mean, he's a gangster, dude. Well, it is oh, yeah. funny that like there was, you know, a, the class one of the first hardcore memes that I remember of more stage dives. You know, that's like the first one. It's like the first one, and like it's like Todd jumping at like a truck stop, <laughs> and it's yeah. like more stage. There's no context. It makes no sense. It's still <laughs> hilarious. But like, <laughs> he was never wrong. No, more no there should times. be more. Yeah. There should be more. That tour was sick, man, that we did with him because we'd go to a venue that would have a barricade. And he was like, I got to talk to the owner. I got to talk to the fucking owner. There's no way. And they would talk for five minutes. We wouldn't see him. Then he comes back and he's like, they're moving the barricade. I'm like, hell yeah, let's go. So I love touring with terror. Oh, dude, my them and the Acacia strain are. By far the my favorite bands we've ever toured with. Casey Strand, maybe the sweetest pound for pound sweetest band on earth. They rock. Oh yeah. They rock. Um they rock. is there so pre pre LPs, we'll get to we'll get to Century Media era. Mm-hmm. Uh were there tours you did because there was it was a rapid ascension yeah. for mm-hmm. the bog. Were there tours you did where you could kind of progressively see like, oh shit, this is this is working. This is happening. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, so 
you know, mainly I wanted to, I was glad to hop in to sing with Sogabog because everyone in the band was all down to, all down the to tour. And, you know, I just kind of fell into a job where I was working for myself so I could take as much time off as I needed to at that, at that time. Incredible. And, um, you know, once I found out they were all down the to tour, I was like, cool, I'm going to put it on the internet, like and create a route and just hit people up. And, um, once we were like four for four for fights mm. on tour, <laughs> I, uh, I was like, it, it, I had an epiphany I was like, this is, uh, this is at least going to be talked about or yeah. it might catch attention somewhere. And, um, it was that first tour. I, I booked the whole thing that we actually got hit up by Century Media. And it was like right really? in the middle of it. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you, I mean, what you're describing is like what they're looking, what everybody's looking for. Right. Organic growth from a band that is like doing things on their own terms. Exactly. That really like, doesn't sound like anybody is t- too. It helps a lot. Right. With and a name that don't sound like anybody too. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wish that like there was that much thought put into the name and logo because <laughs> it's crazy that it that it worked. Yeah, but, but if uh, there was that much thought into it, that's it, that wouldn't yeah, have worked. It wouldn't have worked, right? True. Because it's it's those it's those beautiful that's organic those organic accidents are yeah, what facts. that you can feel the the that that they're genuine. Yeah, yeah, and because uh, I didn't know that it was gonna be kind of like a trend or new wave like so to speak because i was so used to playing shows before that band just people dead arm or arms crossed going or hardcore bands that i were in where it would only be my friends moshing of yeah, course you know? and uh once uh, i started like playing other cities and stuff and seeing other people lose their shit and i was like this is this is it you know and then this is it jacob jacob bannon put put us like on his uh top ep list and uh that was like a real come to jesus moment like for me that's a real that's a real like knighting yeah kind of moment yeah it's funny harm's way wrote a uh mentioned us too and um that was me oh no that was james no that was james in uh in like an interview he did right yeah like like a print interview yeah, it was a pretty. He was like, I, I don't I know how you, like, new how noise you say or revolver. it. Yeah, yeah. He was like, I don't know yeah. how you say it, but it's yeah. spelled. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, fuck yeah, I remember that. Uh, the, everybody has one of those moments with Jake Bannon, huh? Our Dude, our like window of age. Yeah, he's just our he's our guy. Dude, he's, <laughs> he's the he's the fucking king, and he's another dude that's like down to just surround himself with different projects that he could be in. You know. True. I really, I really liked people like that growing up was people that really just expanded and did everything they could with music, you know, like Mike Patton, mm-hmm. uh, Greg Pucciato, um, you know, Jacob Bannon. And I was just like, man, can I be the like, sleazy, like death metal version of that? You know, I think you can. <laughs> people don't realize they, they look at that and they go, fuck man. Like, how do they? How do they manage to do all that? How do they have all this time? When in reality, and I don't know if you, you tell me if you feel the same. Doing multiple projects, doing one, at like when you go kind of switch modes and you're like, all right, I'm going to work on this one now, frees you up. It's easier to do when you walk, like each one that you walk away from a bit makes it easier and faster to like come to back. do things with the, to yep. go back. Because otherwise, if you're stuck in one creative mode, it's going to get stale. Yeah. But stepping away to do something else makes everything better. Now, let me ask you, what if you've never been in a creative mode? It, if you have no <laughs> riffs to begin with, <laughs> it, that's tough. That's, it's unteachable, that's, sadly. That's a tough one. It is, sure. it, it, is, it is a disease. Yeah. And I hope you get well soon. <laughs> it's a... Uh... Yeah, I, I definitely look at it the same way, Colin. It's uh, staying warm, you know. You're always warmed up. And that's that's also why, you know, I booked uh, that week tour before leading up to this big boy tour was because 
I was like, man, it's been, it's been four months mm. since, uh, we've really like toured, um, for a long time. And, you know, then it was just, uh, it was just Europe. So like right. being in Europe was sick cause it was our first time there and we didn't notice like what kind of reach we had over there sure. until we got there. Is it good? But, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Really? It was, yeah, I do. Like I hear your guys is like horror stories about Europe sometimes. And I'm just like, Thank God that wasn't me. You well, know, I mean, yeah. miles the top, like good for you. Thanks, sure. man. I'm, but, I'm dying to tour there now that, that oh, yeah. like, it sounds like things have changed. <laughs> um, and I've always loved the seeing, seeing it. I love interacting mm -hmm. with, with people, mm -hmm. but the, the touring conditions were just weren't ideal for a while for, for our sure. level and, yeah. and all the bills and shit that you have, you know, like it yeah. fucking sucks. Yeah. What's up? What is our, 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 I've heard merch cuts are like, super gnarly there right now did you deal with that yeah we, we we dealt with merch cuts um you know um in some places like we played uh we played a lot of squats and like diy spots of course which which is that's bread and butter you know that's, no, that's, that's awesome whole, yeah for yeah sure. i'll I do would, that all day dude. for sure man i would rather play on the fucking floor in front of everybody than to play a big ass stage with barricades and security and I'd fuck like a barricade and fucking yeah. bullshit and some dork German sound guy. Yeah, fuck that. Um, <laughs> the uh, have we ever really talked about merch cuts, Colin? I don't think so. I don't think so either. And maybe we should. I say, take it from me, motherfucker. <laughs> so that's for my answer you, going forward. For those of you who don't know, um, not every venue. Probably what less than half of the venues that we play, I would say. I don't know now. Yeah, I don't know yeah. now. But you're I about was, to I would, find out. Yeah, yeah. I would say probably, <laughs> probably less than about half in my experience mm -hmm. will take a merch cut, and it'll vary from like ten percent to sometimes like thirty percent. And I think they, the most that we got hit up with was like twenty two to twenty five. Okay, I would need a rep to bend over. And physically kiss my ass to get. <laughs> so what that means Pucker is up. is they will either some two things will happen. They'll either take your word for it and just take your numbers as you come in, mm -hmm. and just say, "Oh, you have this amount of everything." Okay, we'll compare that to the end, and then take a twenty percent or whatever mm -hmm. from that from the uh, the net. Or yeah, the gross, some, rather. Sometimes it's that, and, and sometimes then, you'll try, you'll run into where they're counting it, like right then and there. Yeah, and I fucked up once. I, I, I was in like a kind of a sour mood, and they, they were like, "Well, we should uh, probably count this." Blah blah. And I, I like kind of tossed it. I was like, "Go ahead." And that's not the move. Nah. It's not the move. You be the move polite, is to be. Oh, I already counted it. Or, or just be like, sure, yeah, let's go for it. You know, yeah. just yeah. The, you just got to be nice. Honestly. And then have, and then here's the thing. Yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. listening, if you're listening, if you work for one of these venues or Live Nation or something, turn this off. You you're not hear right now. <laughs> just keep sneaking it in. Yeah, you know? just sneak mm -hmm. in stuff. Bring some other shirts in. Mm -hmm. If if it's venue sell, kill the the seller. Yeah, burn it. Kill the seller. <laughs> Assassin Hitman Three yeah. Death. I might have to cut that. But if you if you sell <laughs> ten larges and you bring in, you sneak in nine in various whatever equipment, backpacks, whatever you can do, then you only sold one. And yeah. oh no, we only sold one large. Dude, the amount of times we've been like, also, so that's the other cool thing is you'll be like, man, man, bad night only sold like two hundred bucks, and they'll be like, ah, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll do that. Yeah. We'll also like, there's there was a time we ran with their clipboard. <laughs> And, uh, I, dude, I, I, we've dodged it probably like all, but like maybe two times. Wow. There's a couple times where it's just, I mean, we've had somebody sit yeah. perched all night, just all yeah. night watching. And what are you going to do? Fuck that. The problem is you're a lot of the times you're going to be back at this, these venues. Yeah, yeah. There's that too. And the, or the, the agent that will, for one, the agent signed a contract saying, okay, there will be a merge cut. And that's what we need to stop doing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We need yeah. to cut it off at the cut the head, you know? Because I'll straight up say like, well, that's fucking news to me. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Right. Like, where's the contract kind of a thing? And then yeah. Yeah, that here's sucks. the signature. I, I've told this before, but the gnarliest one was us playing Hellfest. 
oh. selling two LPs all day because it was venue sale and they yeah, took twenty percent from two LPs. Probably <laughs> took the tips and everything I'm swinging. too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So there's that, right? They're making tips if it's venue sale. Yeah. The bars are making money. We're not getting a cut of the bar. Yeah, they're not getting a bar. We're not getting a bar cut. So, but that I, guarantee is quite high. You know. Uh, but Depends. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I guess. Uh, Why are the people there right. buying uh, booze? It's because of us. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're the ones that Fuck brought them. the asses in Yeah, there. they heard you guys weren't straight edge anymore, and they were like, we should go to their <laughs> show and then buy some, buy some booze. We're maybe. still straight edge. Everybody's still straight edge. <laughs> They're still straight edge. <laughs> it's straight so, edge revenge. Two exactly. of the guys never were. You're starting rumors now. Oh, you're doing great. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Harm's way straight edge. <laughs> uh all right pardon this interruption it's manscape time let's Brothers. let's talk about manscape but what do you think i i love manscape <laughs> <laughs> i got it all the trimmer the lawnmower the, the reviver the preserver we've gone on and on about this stuff my new love in case you didn't catch in the last episode the foot duster oh yeah my dogs are, are April fresh. Absolutely. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I've the body wearing, wash that you threw out is amazing. I the little want, scrubber that came with the body wash kit is awesome. See, I don't have the kit. I just I need the full kit you now. Need, so I'll, 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 I'll talk. I love the way it smelled, though. It made me feel very masculine. It's very masculine know? without being like Axe body no, spray. No, it's, it's just musky and satisfying. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the, the Reviver, like I say every week, is my favorite product. You spray it on, you smell better. It's that simple. It's that simple. And I used it today after the gym <laughs> that I've talked about three times. Nice. So far, Good for you. And it's it's great stuff. Um, really happy that we're working with them because I actually use it and enjoy it. And can like, people will kind of ask us outside of the show, like on the side, and be like, "So is it actually good? Or are you just gonna? yeah?" No, we, like, no, anything I we talk it. about it, we we talk about because we like it. I use it every day. We used it before we started working with them. That's right. So 20% off code HARDLORE, 20% off free shipping. It's also whatnot time, Bo. Let's talk about our first whatnot that just happened. I had a blast. It was so fun. It was so fun. If you missed it, uh, our whatnot shows are basically live versions of HARDLORE that disappear once they're over. So right. You got to be there. You got to be there. We're going to do them at the end of every month, like the around the last Friday of every month is probably yep. going to be the vibe. Um, so don't miss had, our next one in April. We had like 250 people in there. 250 people in Hanging there out. chatting. It's it's like a live Q&A for two hours where you could just also happen to be able to buy whatever items we're talking about. If you want. So click the link below. You join. You get 15 bucks off your first purchase. Oh. We all, we're going to have some really cool stuff there in April. So stick around. Got a bunch we'll of stuff. We'll see you. We'll see you there. Let's get back to the episode. So Century Media comes calling in the middle of your first like real big tour that you booked um, yourselves. It wasn't the first big tour. It was like the DIY tours before management. Wow. Right. And um, wow, they they hit us up and then what's funny is like they wanted they wanted us to send like an EPK and everything back to them and we did and we sent them some songs and Mike Gitter uh VP of A&R mm -hmm. who you know of course, so, classic fucking, friend of the show friend of the yeah, show Mike Gitter mm. kill kill switch fame um many he, things uh, mm. oh yeah. yeah he um wrote us back and was saying like there is nothing memorable about this band and uh like basically like riffed us wow. and we got the email back and we were and like, it was Bad. april 1st <laughs> <laughs> no no and at this time this is when we were with maggot stomp right and scott printed out stickers of his quote wow. that he emailed us with and we were sending that in with the vinyls <sighs> um about a month after that uh you know, Mike ended up seeing that and seeing that we were doing it. He uh, wrote us personally on Facebook and was like, that's actually really funny. And yeah. uh, I fuck with you guys. Like, let's uh, let's have a chat. Like, I get it now, you know? Wow. And then, you know, a couple months after that, it was you know going back to forth. With respect management. to Mike, who he's my buddy now, you know? If I were you, I would have said, go fuck yourself. 
<laughs> See, like keep the bit originally, alive, you know. Originally, like we we were kind of thinking that, but you know, we we signed uh, during COVID, so uh, it was there was months without music, sure. and yeah. we're wanting to like really like come back in a in a bigger than ever way. Sure. And um, not only that, man, like I I kind of like you know I grew close to to Mike and and Philip, the president, and. uh Found out, like, you know, they're just huge music nerds like me. And Big time. I was just like, let's, you know, let's do it. What, um, what's some of your favorite music outside of heavy? Outside of heavy? Yeah. Um, I like old school hip hop a lot. Okay. Uh, what's, what's the master killer of old school hip hop? Damn. We never know what to say. Yeah. You know, I guess you don't. Uh, enter the woo. Oh, okay. Okay. Probably, fucking love Master Killer, man. Yeah, it's good. It's a great record, dude. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> I've been listening to like a lot of like older uh, metalcore bands that I never, I just never like got like my hands on or was never brought up to me. But I have friends like sending me shit, mm-hmm. and there's so many bands that kind of have that like cuss of mm-hmm. Marauder mixed with like other shit. I've been mm-hmm. jamming like crazy. Oh, like, you guys. Like you guys what? ever heard of regression at all? Uh, yeah, I just I I just saw that you were listening to regression. It was cool, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that I do that like regression. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. good. Yeah, it kind of reminds saw me of like Marauder your... and like Machine Head. Oh, they yeah. Maybe did metalcore. Like... It's a good mix. Yeah, big time. So you mostly like hard shit, dude. You like pits. Yeah, yeah. you <laughs> like spin kicking. I'm with you. Fuck yeah! No, oh, I know one. you are. I know. Dude, I know that you know. You know you're not. You love pop. Yeah, I do. You love the softest shit that exists. I like soft shit too. But there uh, needs to be an emotional draw to it, you know? Exactly. It needs if I feel something, it's good. Yeah. If I feel nothing, it sucks. Okay. You know? Yeah. Devin, you feel me? Oh, big time. I'll <laughs> get down know. to like Hall and Oates and uh Depeche oh. Mode and shit <sighs> like crazy. Dude, you want to talk about a band that has got tracks. It's Hall and Oates. Big time. And Depeche Mode. Depeche, and Depeche Mode. Depeche Mode, proof of the grind. Dude, oh, dude. We yeah, talk about tell, all the time. tell it. Tell it. Violator, 10 years into their career. 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. That, Don't give that, up. I, I literally think about that when I'm like down on myself. No. Never stop gambling. Never stop trying to write hits because you, you just might do enjoy the silence. Also, <laughs> dude, the OG, like that is the that song is the craziest example of a producer saying what are you doing oh yeah change yeah, this. Me about this right because right. the original version of the song is like an accordion only and the lyrics and Damn. it's it's like 50 bpm slower so it's like words it's like, like yeah it's like words like violence wow. and just an accordion going and then some producer was like no this you have a hit add a beat make it fast so for sure get a second opinion if you're listening to this wow not from me it's from somebody else (laughs) so century media signs you (laughs) your first lp came out the same day as ours yep that was awesome it was 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 honored honored to share the day with you oh yeah yeah, God say yep. sang with Sugabox, same day, dude. Cool. March something, 2021. <laughs> yeah. Great yeah, day. And that first uh the first LP was uh it was weird. You know, I uh it it took it took a while to kind of like grow on me. Oh you know, so to speak. Interesting. Because you know, it it, it in, in a lot of ways it's like our EP, and then in, in a lot of ways it's uh completely like polarizing and uh huh so, so it, it it took a minute you know i i, like I think for you for me yeah wow that's very interesting yeah i was the one that they had to like sell on it because i did uh oh, wow. you know, i did a lot of like toilet bowl like early despised icon like gutturals and shit on it mm-hmm. and that was um that was off the off the whim because mm-hmm. we uh we tracked and I just did like a standard vocal style that I did on the EP. And Cody was like, dude, do those gutturals that you were doing that one practice. And I was like, you like that? And I was like, all right. And I busted them out. And, uh, 
you know, there were some songs where it was just that. And right. it, it, because I was so like, you know, I, I would never say I'm a perfectionist because, sure. you know, I put my heart in everything I do. Yeah. Whether it's that's cool not or not. That's perfection. Like, that's passion, baby. Passion. You're a, pa- yeah. you're a passionist. Yeah. So when that I was, do listen to good. stuff, sometimes I'm like, man, I, all the time I'm always like, man, I should have redone that. I should have. Mm. I mean, brother, look who you're talking to. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got 14 years of I should have redone that. <laughs> sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's 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 fascinating to hear that. Yeah. You were second guessing your first LP when generally, That's first like, LP is yeah. where you're like, hey, this is who we are. We yeah. Got it. And they had to sell their own singer on his own voice. That's for wild. sure. I think I think this most recent one is the one that I really like. You have arrived. Was in love with. Yeah. yeah. Let, let let's let's talk about it. I want to talk about the cover art mm-hmm. and how it makes me feel. <laughs> he doesn't feel good. It. Oh yeah, it, 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 he's disturbed. By it, it makes yeah. me physically uncomfortable. <laughs> wow. I don't know who who designed it. Do you know? Off the top uh, of head. Yeah, Caleb Butcher. He's a collage artist um, from Colorado. Mm. Uh, you know, mutual friend uh, said saw his artwork pretty pretty early on when we got back into touring, and we uh, bought a couple designs from him to print on merch. And you know, originally we were gonna do like this oil painting, is what we talked about having like kind of like a Dan Seagraves like yeah, of course landscape thing kind of like suffocation and shit yeah. does mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um I, exactly. I remember, like literally like, suffocation you yeah. know what's that literally suffocation with, yeah with literally oh yeah, yeah it's all their shit yeah <laughs> and um i remember just being on the road and they were like dude why don't we just run with this you know it's kind of like our miss machine like yeah but death metal mm-hmm. and um you know we sat through like we just we didn't tell, give him any direction at all. We were like, do what you do. We trust you. We do that with every artist that we commission. Do what we're you like, do? That's genius because yeah. you don't have to have an idea. <laughs> exactly. But at the same time, it's like, you know, we'll handle the music part and right. our personalities. Mm-hmm. You handle what the album looks like because visually, you're that artist. Sonically, we're the, these artists. Mm. And... um. He sent us like I think it was like eleven designs, <laughs> and we were all like, "Ah, that's kind of like some of them were." We were like, "Ah, I don't think that'll work." Yeah. Um. Then we would have people like try to mix all of them together, and we were just like, "Man, that kind of takes away from it." Like yeah. we want a centerpiece, right? And we picked the uh, penis lady. Yeah, rotating I mean, penis lady. I don't, I don't know if it's a penis, man. She could be. She could be drinking a two liter. She it's could be crab penis, man. You know what? You know <laughs> what, Mr. Devin? Butcher? Uh, he's sick. He needs help. It's a hundred percent a two liter. So <laughs> I retract the two liter lady from the Sango Sugar Bug uh, album art. I'm a bit. I love the art. Thanks, man. Yeah. I like. I like to look at it and go, ew. <laughs> yeah. And it's... then go, and then show it to somebody and go, look how gross this is. Look. So yeah and that was the whole you know the whole point about it is like yeah. the i had to have that aesthetic to give you some kind of reaction shock about you know something yeah and i think uh what's more cooler than it being pictures of actual things rather than it just being like digit digitally manipulated or yeah, uh, sure. yeah. You do like run the the Jane Doe risk of of two liter lady one day being like, "Yo, I did this photo shoot where I was drinking a two liter like two <laughs> years ago, and I just saw it on this band's art." Yeah, so it, it took that. her it took her years to like oh, catch dude. wind of it. Right, it she her, just like, figured it out over twenty years. Just yeah. found it like a year ago. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember that she was making a post about it and everything. I wonder how that ended. Uh, somebody got paid. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, and it, it wasn't me. I don't know. Anything. It wasn't me. I didn't get paid. Get paid yeah. Should um, ask Kurt. I want to talk about my favorite song. Yeah, I hit it. Pissed is an Fuck excellent, yeah. excellent song. Song, we, song title. We talked to Cody a little bit um, at LDB. LDB. 
um, and I like touched on it, but I want to I want to ask you because he, he was, was very high. So he I was on another could, planet. Yeah, he told me. <laughs> <laughs> so during pissed when when the the part comes back and he goes to like the full time there's the court again the got the life got the upbeat with the fill with the late hit whose idea was that? That was Cody's. Okay, Cody is uh All right. is he the guy? He's a branch, he's a brainchild man. Mm. He um he's the extreme music rain man. He's fucking he's got it, dude. And you know we were all uh. We're all huge Corn and Deftones mm-hmm. fans, and we're just like, dude, these are these are bands that aren't secretly heavy. But mm-hmm. if I if I'm rocking like rocking them, like I have like my elitist friends that are like, dude, what the fuck are you listening to? Mm-hmm. But it's just like those are bands that uh definitely inspire. I got no beef with all Korn. of those. He Colin hates Deft. All of Southern California, they hate Deftones. <laughs> they all hate them. It's crazy. You'd have to. You'd have I mean, to I, I I get it though because uh, you know they did they they were garbage for a little while. <laughs> it's it is it's not their fault, mm-hmm. you know, because I <laughs> I I understand what people like about them, but it was what? something that very young did like disconnect did not connect. But yeah. come, but come on, Ch- taste change. There's a lot they of do. bands. They grew, I love, they, on, they I love onions. On me. Love onions now. Oh yeah, I'm getting into. I just got back into bar soap. Oh, I, yo, Loving I that bar soap today. Oh, yeah. Loving bar soap. Uh, I just got into. Uh, I put dill on my bagels now. Nice. Got into dill. I'm so proud of you. Maybe Deftones is next. <laughs> this is the typical yeah. onion, dill, Deftones the pipeline. pipeline yeah. You know. But yeah, Easy. the corn part, the got the life, fucking fill everything, and you just go <laughs> like so cool. Um, that's my favorite part on the record. I listened to it twice on the way back from Michigan recently, just oh, yeah. like back to back, and um, it just always it, it's always in my head, and that's how I measure like my my jams on a record. The you know? the unit of measurement that I compare everything to now is do i go back you yeah know? yeah the first listen the first watch is fine that's good like that movie was good but am i gonna watch it again mm-hmm. that record is good but am i gonna listen to it again mm-hmm. second right. thing with sukabag lp easy multi-listener yeah, for me. yeah yeah same but Sick i feel too, like because it's 45 minutes long exactly long. Yeah. yeah but that's that's irrelevant when when the quality is what it is. Like a right. warning record is fucking six hours long. <laughs> right. But I never think about that. I just go, I got to make it to this part. Same. Yeah. Uh, so you, I feel like you finally, re- you've arrived at like the vibe that you've been working to present with the second record. Yeah. Is there, I mean, is, is Cody like the guy when it comes to writing or is it pretty collaborative? It's very, it's very collaborative. Like we all, cool. we all have a hand in it. Um, it, yeah, it's funny. We, it's it's always. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's always you. I feel the same way if I hear there's one guy or if it's everybody. I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, that's so sick. Yeah. Like every yeah. time, it's like wow. Whatever the answer is, like that's awesome. That's, that's, that's so good for you. Yeah, that's cool. I do. Like, uh, you know, there there were some songs. Uh, there was a B side track too. That um, you know, me and Cody, we we would have this thing like a date night where we'd all hang out. And we're like, we need to do a song like this, and I'd show him some bands. And then I would do, uh, you know, finger taps and uh, judge judge riffs. Yeah. And uh, singer singer songwriting style, just going do something like this. Jun, jun, ja, ja, jun, ja, yeah. Jun, ja, ja. And then he goes, okay. Yeah. And he, <laughs> that's a great pull, system. He'd pull it out, and then, um, you know, said and uh, said and Drew are so um, their musical taste is so like out there and crazy, and mm-hmm. their influences on stuff that we were coming out with like we didn't we kind of like said like you know basically we'll look at this as like this is our first album of this band Mm -hmm. we're not going to worry about trying to sound too much like our old shit or try to sound completely different we're just gonna take our influences and what what we like and want to write and just have it all flow like organically i think that is 
a, a true like positive evolution is when mm -hmm. it's like you as you as people are continuing to say, hey, here's who we are. Right. In the context of this band. Right. Right. And that's that that what you just described is like exactly what people want from you. Yeah, that's what well, I kudos. want from a band. For sure. I love band like when bands Super wear their influences and shit on their sleeves. Oh, please. God, I love dude. It. This like you guys love a shirt of band, you know, like hey, I have this we fuck with it. We sound like this band. We're going to wear the shirt. Yeah. I lo I love we everybody needs that. Stop wearing black blank t-shirts and promo pics. Oh, for sure, yeah. Fuck <laughs> oh all my that. god. We were just talking I mean, the episode obviously will I think the episode will it's have out. been out by now, but we were just OG talking about OG bands that. get a pass, so I think. Yeah, of course. They do we cuz they they don't it. they they like Jack Daniels, you know, they right. don't like bands. <laughs> we were just talking about with Maddie about how liner notes or how you would get into bands back in the day, but oh, t-shirts same. Possibly now more than that's ever. bigger. So for me, yeah. me watching like a machine head fucking dynamo video, you know, yeah, he's in a cool there's neurosis tease on there cool and I go, okay, what's neurosis? Breaker. Yeah. Yeah. Wear fucking shirts bands. Yeah. Wear band shirts. God damn it. <laughs> you with me, Devin? Oh, big time. I know you yeah. are. What's the I, best tour you ever done in your life? Best tour I've ever done. Also, no, life. what's your favorite shirt? There we go. That's a good one. <laughs> damn. Love that. Um, yeah. This is band from uh, it's a hoodie, and yeah. uh, it's uh, this band Eternal Suffering. They um, they put out like two compilations and a, and a demo, but they're uh, they're really fucking heavy. And they have this hoodie, and it's just a basically like an old English font of their logo, mm. and then it's got like a death metal font like down the sleeves, and then on the back it says uh, "Music to your mother's ears." Fuck yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love wearing it because it's 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 a rare it's a rare find that they they printed like a hundred of them back in two thousand four nice. and never did anything with them again. <laughs> That's a big order in two thousand four, yeah. right? Yeah, hundred hoodies. I'd be like, I've got to I got to take out a second. I got to take out a loan from Granny to do a hundred yeah. hoodies. I oh have a God. new Grail, Colin. What's your new Grail? A new shirt that I want. Um, that mutual friend, friend of the show. Um. Heather Bailey has, but it's the uh, Nine Inch Nails see. Hate 1990 shirt. Mm. Hate yeah. 1990 is crazy. So crazy. <laughs> They're not even that hateful, you know? But I guess Clevo that's the, band. Band. That, the album that is, title. That is untrue. They're very They want to fuck like animals and shit. That's positive. That's love. Listen to the rest <laughs> of the... Dude, that, dude, that band was so fucking good. Anyway. Yeah, they, got, they got tracks. You don't have any grails, Colin? I know we talked about this I also. Got grails. Briefly. Still, I've always still. wanted a, a Chromax down but not out That's 89 right. shirt. I've I'll right. never get one because the XL is probably a medium now. Yeah, you dude. know, we're fucked, Devin. We don't get to wear the, the cool stuff that these little guys get to wear. Hey, mm -hmm. what? That's a good thing. No, I little think, as in fit shirts. I don't. Right. I don't fit into fucking. I'm moving up to XLs. I decided recently. Well, then oh, the yeah. three of us are fucked yeah. by all these shirts <laughs> not fitting guys that like us. You know. I'll still fucking wear them. I'll just cut the sleeves. Yeah, you know? you're ripped. Oh, come so on, you can you can do it. <laughs> yeah, the amount of the amount of priceless sleeves that I've cut off. Is, <laughs> I'm wanted in certain countries. I kind of like doing it now. <laughs> yeah, I like cutting the sleeves and the neck out of like a, a like expensive shirt or something. It's I have a reason. Yeah, it makes me not sell the shirt. Oh, that is true. It renders it worthless, therefore only valuable to me. Ooh, yeah. I like that. So I, I there's never going to be a day where I'm like, I should sell this. I go, oh, no, I fucked it. <laughs> I fucked that up. I chopped the sleeves. Okay. Colin, you had an idea for an episode, but I think we should move it into a segment that we ask every guest. What's that? Favorite band name. Oh, what's the best band name ever, Devin? Like all genres, whatever. Just what's the one where you're like, fuck, that's a that's good name. That's so good, dude. Um... There's this uh, deathcore band from California uh, called Pencil Lead Syringe. Wow. Oh, I thought that that was that's sick. There's another one from. Uh, so you love a nasty band name. <laughs> yeah. A gross there's an, band. There's name. another one from um, Las Vegas called I've Been Shot. Yeah, I know. I've been shot. <laughs> I thought that's really cool. Do you that band, that, there's a new band, newer band called Pupil Slicer. Yeah, yeah. Pupil Slicer's sick. 
I, like I don't. Them. I hate. I, it scares me. The band name. <laughs> that pupil slicer record came out the same day as ours. Yep. Oh, and yeah. everywhere, everywhere I had to read new <laughs> God Tate sang with Sugarbug pupil slicer album, and I'd be like, Ugh. I think there was Ugh. a Citizen record that came out the same time too. Wow, is that true? Big day. I think so. March, crazy day. Dude. You got. You want to say your favorite column? No. You were saving it. We're doing a whole episode about. Okay. That. Okay. Okay. This oh, is yeah. about Devin today. <laughs> All right. This is about Devin's favorite things. Right. What's the best tour you ever done? You think the one where you were like, "Man, that was pretty cool." <laughs> Damn, uh, I'd say uh, Terror, man, Terror, yeah. uh, Kubla Khan, us and uh, Pain of Truth, and then we did that's a tour connecting a tour. dates, and then we did uh, like eight days with uh, Cannibal Corpse and Two Hundred Stab Wounds. So that was basically one tour for you. Yeah. yeah. Man. Yeah, that's a tour. That's tough to top. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> hey, did, what's uh, what's did, like surreal about it is, you know, our first six week uh, tour that we did, like right after COVID, all the lockdowns and everything came, came lifted. Uh, we played in Tampa at the Orpheum uh, with Dying Fetus and Terror on the, that tour that they did it uh, like the fall, winter. Right. 2021 and i'm talking to, to scott vogel and we're shooting the shit and he just says yeah we'll tour together someday and i'm you know i never really heard that before from right like someone i looked up to so i was like what do you mean we'll, we'll see yeah yeah <laughs> what and do you then, mean we'll tour together <laughs> and then uh uh corpse grinder was actually at the show too and wow. um Got to shoot the shit with him, get a picture. Nice. He had some really cool words. Like, you know, he told me uh, one of the cool things he said was, you know, thanks for keeping death metal alive. And I was like, that's fucking dope. That was like the most <laughs> real recognized real shit. You're I've welcome, ever. sir. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No problem, dad. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, sorry. What? I love you. What? <laughs> he is the yeah, I love you, what? fucking man. <laughs> we talked to him about favorite, favorite. Fuck. We talked to him about our favorite Christmas movies for 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. What's your While he Christmas was like movie, just off stage, still sweating on the way to the bus, he like stopped to talk about youth of today and Christmas. Hell yeah! Those are mine and James' two favorite things. <laughs> you like Christmas, Devin? Love Christmas. Dude, What's the best Christmas movie? What? Give me a top five on in no order. Okay, uh, Jingle All the Way. Mm. Um, you're, you're a gangster, dude. <laughs> you know, off the bat, um, Christmas Vacation. Incredible. Ah mm. uh, shit. Um, Damn, Jim Carrey's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Correct. That's incredible. Used to scare me as a kid, too. Yeah. Which is crazy. You ever go to as a kid? That's like a new now. Christmas movie to me. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ever go to Universal here? Uh, no. The set is still there. I'll have to check it out. That's really? sick. Yeah. yeah. You can they have like a it. whole like Whoville like village. The whole the village is still there. That's wow. awesome. If you do the studio tour, it goes right through it. Hell yeah. All right, so Jingle All the Way, Christmas Vacation, Grinch. This Grinch. is this is rock solid so Strong, far. Strong, yeah. Elf. What else you got for me? Elf is gangster, good. gangster move. And one of the uh, last great classics, really. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let's see. I would say, damn man, this really gonna. This is really it's a romantic comedy, but fucking Four Christmases with oh Vince Vaughn. God, what? I love that movie. <laughs> yeah. I love that movie. Great oh, yeah. answer. When the baby like throws up on her. I'm going to do it too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Incredible movie. No Great home, pick. No Home Alone is crazy. Oh, shit. It's a wild style. Yeah. I mean, I like I liked Home Alone, but. You like what just, you like. No, there's no judgment. Right. You went with your there, was just, there was just so many of them to where kind of like got lost. But Jingle sure. All the Way was like one of my favorite movies. Like. Dude, I, lo- I love I love that you instantly said Yeah, Jingle yeah, that was the f- yeah. right off the rip. That Jingle made me I, fucking rocks. I have a I have a Turbo Man action figure. It's really? got a he's it's got a boomerang and everything. This so. does it say the it's line. Really cool. Yeah, this is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> this is really cool. <laughs> this Whoa, is the cookie down. Good. Now. This yeah. is it, I love his like the it, funny Englishisms where he doesn't say like that. He yeah. says this always. This is yeah. my ball. Yeah. This is my ball. Yeah. And then the director would be like, there's fucking cut. That's perfect. Dude, dude I <laughs> love on. Phil Hartman in that movie. It's nope. nestled safely under our tree. Dude, un- 
The movie. only person that references that Arnold is an Austrian bodybuilder in the yeah. movie. You know? Try bench pressing your <laughs> Can't bench press your out. What a film. We'll, 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 we'll talk again in December, Devin. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk <laughs> about oh, yeah. more. So the Chaos and Carnage tour coming right up might end up being one of the coolest tours of all time for you guys, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have a, I have a good feeling. I'm surprised with how many uh, OG like deathcore bands fuck with us. So I'm not. Yeah, you're not. Are you really? No, no not at all. Yeah, I'm very surprised by it actually. I suppose I that's think, a good feeling. I, I think it's it, you tastefully <laughs> dip your toes in it. Yeah, kind of. You know, in a way that isn't offensive to like the hardcore world that doesn't really fuck with deathcore because they just right. would never know that that's what you're doing. Yeah. Oh, but, well, I mean, that, that that was the same thing with like hardcore too. It's just like, man, like we have blast beats. So like you're like hardcore kids are really fucking with us. That's sick. Yeah. You know? Cause at the end of the day you go, chin, 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 yeah. chin, you know, and that's what they're looking for. Oh, for sure. Well, we got uh, the two step parts. <laughs> they're playing the forge, Colin. Juliet. Our yeah. beloved forge. <laughs> be our hey. second time playing there oh, okay you've been there before did you go to the harris the casino around the corner I did not i it's went like to some like bar. hole in the wall like uh uh burger place so that was pretty cool I, i'm i'm in i'm in chicago a lot i have a I have family out in evanston oh right on mm-hmm. so been north yeah yeah i love uh, love chicago man yeah love uh the ford the reckless records dude reckless i was there today Walked hell yeah <laughs> The Forge was the was the venue where when I said we have one song left, the entire room applauded. It was like, yes! Oh. It was awesome. Like, fuck yeah, it's almost yeah. over. It was brutal. Yeah. It was wild. That was brutal. Did oh, we shit. play Suck My We didn't play Suck My Dick? You did, you did. We that did. The we only time I saw day. you play it was there. Y'all yeah. did a carnivore cover? Yeah. yeah. yeah nice. That was the, that's the, the show is bad, we closed with Suck My Dick. That's, that's that sick. was the, the audible that we called. Fuck yeah. Um, oh. Chaos and Carnage. Touring with Dying Fetus. I can tell you firsthand... That's that's a band you watch every night. Absolutely. Um, and every every transition is like a history lesson when watching Dying <laughs> Fetus. Where I go, damn, I got to do that. <laughs> da, 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 oh, I got to do that one. <laughs> so I'm excited for you guys, for you to tour with them. Um, just because I know, like, as a fan, it's the best thing ever. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's crazy is like, I've seen Dying Fetus so many times, and uh, I've, I've I've talked about this before. But every time I've tried to like get a picture with John Gallagher, he's like kind of shooed me off and went to the bus. Wow, it's it, it's happened like four times. So <laughs> Not I thought it was time. personal, and then I talked to uh, uh, a dude that used to run merch for him, and he was just like, "Oh, dude, he just likes to hang on the bus and smoke pot and load out or whatever." And I was just like, "All right, I get it." I was like, now we're like 30 days together. He ain't avoiding me. No, he's going to get the full Devin, dude. Oh, yeah. Because I only had a handful of conversations with him when we toured. But, like, he's he's like us, man. Yeah. Hell, yeah. Where it's like he, he's, he references hardcore and steals riffs and turns them into his thing, you know? Well, dude, his old hardcore band was amazing, man. Knuckle exactly. Pete. Exactly. Yeah. Just doing, doing everything that we like. Fuck, yeah. Yeah, he's What's, uh. I don't, I, it's crazy too because like seeing interviews and stuff with him i don't think he has a shred of a clue of how badass he is no no way the most humble dude like really? ever man and i was just like dude you literally wrote riffs to beat the shit out of someone yeah. too you know and that's intentional and that's what i like <laughs> <laughs> like damn this is fucking hard uh oh yeah who Devin? Do you do mm. as Devin on stage? Who are mm. the singers that you kind of subconsciously combined to become who you are? Um, the real obvious one is uh, Frank Mullen. Um, I take uh, a lot of inspiration uh, from him uh, big time because that's it's my favorite death metal vocalist of like all time. You know, suffocation is of course pinnacle. And then... Uh, I never got to play or see play with or see suffocation with Frank. So, 
Oh, it's, a tr- it's a treat. I saw them, uh, saw Sofo when I was 13 and changed, changed my world, man. The fucking, uh, yeah, them, him, um, Corpse Grinder. Of course. Of course. Um, the goat. The yeah. Actual goat. Yeah. I would yeah. say Ackerfeld, uh, Bloodbath, like era, you know? Um, Interesting. I like his vocals a lot. And then, uh, a band that's very underground uh, that I take a lot of inspiration from uh, vocally is a band from New Jersey called Mortal DK. Mm. And uh, they had a vocalist on an album. Uh, his name was Kelly Izquierdo. Mm. His like shrieking, like highs and screams uh, is something I've tried to like implement like on a lot of our stuff. <clears throat> and is then, that you on the newest record doing the high stuff? Yeah, I do it all. You do it all? Cool. Yep. Very cool. And then uh, he does it all. He does it. Do it. God damn, does he ever? <laughs> and then uh, n- two other ones, I would say uh, Jason Hendershaw from a band called uh, Scattered Remnants. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I would also say uh, Frank Rini from Eternal love- Bleeding. Fuck yeah! Okay. The God, dude, the the OG, straight up. Oh yeah, I love <laughs> I love that they're finally getting the respect they deserve. Even it's like a, like within hardcore, really, because it's been it's been a, it's been overdue. I agree. I agree. They are. Uh, they, they. I mean, they've played hardcore bills like so much in New York, and then now they're like getting a lot more notoriety um, in the scene, and that's uh, that's sick, man. Because like, if you ask Chris, their guitar player, he's the fucking man. He is, and he, yeah. he'll 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 straight up tell you like. Yeah, I Ray wrote those riffs after hearing us, you know. Oh, yeah. So that's yeah, fucking they're... that's fucking dope. It's well deserved. <laughs> I got it. Uh, you you told me something the other day. <laughs> You're gonna... the man. <laughs> Stop. You're the man. Stop, dude. Uh, why you you sing about penises sometimes? Uh huh. Why do you do that? Because of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, an songs. In, that's an incredible an- personal anecdote with us Devin. we're linked at the dick you know that's right we're the capital h capital <laughs> <laughs> it's the figure trip so that's beautiful to hear thanks Devin. <laughs> the capital h oh my god what's that song it's a foul phallus uh, yeah it's just it's called astigmatism it's just called astigmatism now they got to figure out the foul <laughs> uh, but it's not online currently no no it's a deep cut man yeah, yeah i got it i do what's crazy is i got that cd at a skate shop that's cool yeah. that's fun. i yeah. don't think there are many of the cds so that's badass mm-hmm. nice. i think it was just someone working there like just selling some stuff and trying to expose some stuff. And yeah, I, I, I would read the lyrics and I'm just like, man, cause it's, it's, it's about, it's about a wiener, but you're not talking about it. You it know? is. Yeah. Yeah. It's a metaphorical and, wiener. It's all about wieners. Yeah. Oh yeah. You think like, about yo, love is wieners. Base you know? level. Right. It's the astronaut looking at earth and he's like, man, it's all it's dick. All- he's like, it's always has been. Always has been. <laughs> <laughs> um can one have an astigmatism of the dick or did you just kind of make that up no i don't know i was 18 years old but I, i've never <laughs> Listen, i've never ask. had i didn't ask no i don't know i don't know i mean i still to this day i've never <laughs> looked it up <laughs> but i don't know that's fun yeah bro his his dick's got 2020 vision yeah right. yeah his dick, just, <laughs> his dick sees light just kind of blurry right? yeah like stars my prescription you wouldn't believe my prescription your dick prescription <laughs> It's incredible. Yeah. Per yeah, we'll we'll leave it there. Let's talk food. Well, let's well, let's end we'll end with food. I want to know if you've seen a ghost real quick. You ever okay. seen a ghost? We ever? also have uh all the, the post is still up from last week, right? So I know we got so many questions stuff. from okay. the people for you. Oh, yeah. Do ghosts, I'm gonna go to that stuff. You ever see a ghost? I have, man. Um my, my parents man. will tell you the story too. So where I'm from in uh, Reynoldsburg, uh, Ohio, the house. You that listen, I grew Bo. Up put in. that down for a second, because he's seen a ghost. I'm I'm literally listening. I've seen okay. plenty. Reynoldsville, Ohio. Reynoldsburg. Reynoldsburg. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you're listening. You <laughs> I'm scrolling to a Birth, week ago. Birthplace of Little Bow Wow. 
Oh, wow. Congrats. Yeah, I'm the second most famous guy from Reynoldsburg, dude. Amazing, <laughs> dude. And um, my my grandmother's house uh, that I grew up in um, mm-hmm. is part of the historical society because her house was a part of the Underground Railroad. Okay. Wow. And um, there was this – so my, my mom tells me the story. I remember bits and pieces of it because – I was really young and uh, my grandmother had this picture of a woman in a blue bonnet and she was uh, skinning potatoes in this painting. Mm. And my mom and the rest of my family were in a living room. I was in the dining room and I guess all they heard was a loud no. And all of the tea light candles and all of uh, the lights just shut off. Wow. She she goes into the the dining room and I'm just like sitting at the table. And I said that the woman in the painting shut off the lights and blew out all the candles. Wow. And um, growing up, I... uh, I would just see some weird stuff. I would see like stuff on the counter, like literally start to move like all on its own. Wow. And I would hear, I would hear noises. And my grandmother told me like later on, uh, she actually had, cause she was looking at getting the house like appraised and Uh trying to put it up. Well, she kept hearing stories like from the neighborhood that the house was haunted. that she, um, hired like basically a paranormal investigator. And they told her not not only was the house uh, a part of the Underground Railroad, which she already knew about, mm-hmm. but uh, that there was a man who murdered his uh, his wife. Wow! Um, in the house, and that she was actually buried in their backyard. Oh fuck! See, there it is. Oh. Yeah. How, was how old were you when you found that out? Um, I was in high school when I found that out. So I was and like, you, I was probably like 15 or 16. And you were you still were, living there? I was still what? Were you still living there when you found that out? Um, so I was daycared there. Um, I lived there when I was a, a little kid. And then I was daycared there because uh, you know, both my parents would go off to work. And my grandmother mm-hmm. lived across the street from the school that I went to. Mm. And then um, when my parents, when my parents split up, you know, I was, a, I was in high school and um I didn't, I don't want to live with like either of them. Cause I didn't want to call anybody else like mom or dad mm-hmm. and or feel like that. So, yeah. uh, I moved in with my, my grandma wow. and she ended up telling me about it. And I noticed yeah. like all kinds of weird stuff, like bed spreads, like being ripped off the bed, but no one did it, you know, all kinds of shit. That's too much evidence, bro. To, <laughs> to doubt. Okay. I'm convinced. Thank you. It's real. Oh, it's <laughs> totally real. It's Thank you never, for sharing. It, it is yeah. never me saying that someone didn't experience what they experienced. Yeah. Ever. You just want to see it. You got to look up uh, Sammy Hagar's uh, alien abduction story. That's oh, yeah? Crazy. yeah? Well, you believe in aliens, right, Bo? Fuck yeah, I believe in aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I also believe that a lot of alien encounters or UFOs and stuff are not aliens. But I do believe in aliens. Disagree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you think they're flat out. Every single one was aliens. <laughs> <laughs> how else could th- that happen? Yeah. How, how else could you lose a minute of your day? You know, Dude, I feel lost, like aliens are just visiting people before. that are tweaked out just so, because they know people aren't going to believe them. Uh, dude, yeah. I, I think that sometimes I'll see somebody who's like, where I'll be like, damn. <laughs> uh, a lot of the time I see them and I think, what do they know that I don't know? You know? Right. Is it like, can drugs alter your brain that much? Or are you just seeing something that I now can't? Yeah, that uh, beats me. Guess I got to try. <laughs> Have I told my time loss story? No. On the show? No. Really? Nope. Time okay. theft. You've told that one. Oh, you do it every good day. God. <laughs> you know what's so funny? I got fired and that was not even brought up. Really? But I stole. <laughs> Hours, good and, uh, four hours a day. Stole. Time theft is awesome, it's the best, okay. best kind of theft. Um, so really quickly, 
when I was in like middle school, I, mm-hmm. I worked at a place called Bogies. It was a hot dog place in. in it was my, a venue in upstate New York. Yeah, I, I worked at a. <laughs> yeah, I worked at Bogies in upstate in, in Albany. Yeah. Um, it was a hot dog place. I got paid under the counter cash. It was cool. I was fourteen. I had a worker's permit, and it was over the summer. My mom would leave me like five bucks, and it was like feed yourself. Do whatever. Here's five bucks, like every day. Yeah, yeah. And I was a little latchkey kid, so I would go. I'd take the money. I would take a video game that I had rented the previous day with the five bucks. Mm-hmm. Go get a new video game and rent it. No food. No food. No. I would eat at bogeys. Oh right. So right. I would. I, I. But I would wake up early enough to where I would go and like finish playing the game and decide like, am I am I gonna keep it for another day or, for, or am I gonna return? I would like try to make up my mind. And I would, it was, you know, how routines are. Like, I would wake up at, ele- you know, 10, 11 every day. Yeah. And I had to return the game by, like, 1 or something. You know, like, everything was really regimented every single day. And I went and I sat out at the PlayStation. I was sitting there. And I worked later that day at 5 p.m. <laughs> so, yeah, I would work for, like, three hours. It was Because, yeah. was, you well, you could not a work permit. Yeah. And I would go and sit. And I sat down and I did. I was going to do the thing where I was like, okay, do I want to keep this or blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden I was late for work. Like I didn't sleep till five for sure. Didn't sleep that late. Right. I, I sat down and I was, and when I like kind of realized what was going on, I looked, I was still on like the menu screen of the game mm. and I was late for work and I got fired because of it. They were like, now, well, the we skeptic was like, what, were you tired? Would you yeah. be like, fuck you? Yeah. It was yeah. really weird. And then on the way, it's just weird memory on the way to bogeys to be like, I'm so sorry. Like, you know, whatever. I saw a bird that was like all wrapped up in fishing wire and was stuck. And I used my like keys to free it. Cause it was on like the bottom part of a tree. And that made me even more late. Just weird, simulated. Just this a weird day. But yeah, I lost None of this is a real, lot of time. Dude. None of this is real. <laughs> this thing we're doing, this show fake time denier scripted. Yeah. I deny. I, all time. I don't think time is real. I don't think traffic no. is real. Traffic? Traffic? Yeah. Just, just, just go. Just go. Yeah. <laughs> just move. If you just drive, <laughs> there will be nobody behind you stuck. <laughs> now, that's a good bit for your tight five. You know? <laughs> How about this traffic we're having, huh? You guys just ever, go. You ever experienced traffic? Let's talk, let's talk some, some culinary prowess, Devin. You seem like a man who can eat. I know you eat good. I mean, with all due respect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know you eat good. Hit them with. So, the so let me question. ask you this. Yeah. Or you're driving down the road, right? You're on the freeway. You're flying down. Uh-huh. You, you got so much time. So much time. Yeah. You see one of them signs with the food exit here. It's got everything on it. Every place. Doesn't matter. There's no where regional you are. exception. Yeah. Every, it's got oh, everything. Sick. You can have whatever you want. What is the thing where you or the band collectively is like, pull this fucking van off the road or you're dead? You know, <laughs> we're eating this. Now. Bo's, gonna, Bo's gonna like this one. Uh, Portillo's. Oh! Wow, <laughs> dude, incredible answer. Italian oh. beef, man. Italian fucking oh. beef, Devin. I had my first Italian beef two days ago. Revolutionary. In Chicago. Oh my god. Yeah, dude. Chicago's got the best food, man. We got we got it all. Oh yeah. We, we got everything you need right go here. Go to go to Skokie uh Pita Inn. Dude, Pita Inn. Yeah, Holy man. that's oh, because Evanston. Okay, okay, okay. Yep. All the all the helpings and it's dude, it, it's bang for your buck too, man. It's dude, cheap. It's like ten bucks and you get a table's worth of food. Yeah, like a yeah. whole table. Um when you get your beef. Yeah, do what do you get? How do you, how do you, get? you do it? I get the juice, and then I get uh, big beef. Oh, yep, big beef. Big beef. I get everything, man. I get the melted cheese. I get uh, the onions, mushrooms. Do you do, do you do it dipped or or just the the regular way? Regular way. Dipped nice. is a little crazy. Yeah. Uh, do you get it with the hot peppers? I do. The jardinera. Oh. Yep. My man. And dude. I wash it down with the Arnold Palmy, dude. Oh, wow. Arnie Palmy alert. I didn't even yeah. know they had that. Amazing. Wow. Wow. Dude, Devin, great answer. <laughs> Truly the most bold over I've ever been about an answer. Yeah, I'm. 
Because I I'm so fresh off of Portillo's, I'm still digesting it. I'm actually I just sprayed it out about two hours ago. <laughs> um, so I'm still thinking about it now that it has finally left me, and I I'm dying for it again. Maybe I'll get it to. Should I be dinner? Yeah, dude. Just for just send me for a you pick. Two. But we also in uh in Columbus we have a Giordano's. No kidding. So yeah. Giordano's is the enemy. Mm-hmm. Okay. However, when you're when you're out of state, what are you gonna do? Yeah, yeah. right. You know what I mean. If I'm not at home, I'll take a Giordano's. It's fine. Mm-hmm. But we went to lose yesterday, Colin oh. and I. Oh, we had a time. Oh, my oh God. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, it was like so good that bruschetta. you'd have to sell me. Ooh, the, we talked about it briefly. Ooh. Thought about it. We thought about it, but we had – I wanted ice cream after, you know. Yeah, yeah. We oh, yeah. Jenny, man. So we <laughs> got a deep dish pepperoni and then a thin crust lose cheese. The thin crust goes. Which was fine. That's fine. Okay, all right. It should have been well. The the crust is a little. It, it was a little. The whole thing was a little undercooked. Actually. It's a little undercooked. A little underdone. Yeah. But the deep dish is fucking. Giordano's. The one time I've had Giordano's, I was so I felt so spited that you'd have to sell me for a turn. <laughs> so you simply have to pay me. Um, you know, those are good answers, though. Those yeah, are man. very very good answers. Very. Chicago you like McDonald's? Centric. I really appreciate that. In Columbus, we have uh, you know, we have old. Old world pepperoni, which is uh, yes, oh, of like course, the, the shingles, the, the cups, cup dude, yeah. the cups, dude, the little grease traps, the sippy cups, so like Donatos, Massies, and spots like that. Man, that's oh. where uh, that's some of the best. I, I love Are Columbus you, style pizza. This is a very important question. Though. That's very important. Are you a McDonald's guy? I love Don's, my dude. man. Are you, are you a soldier? You're you're in Ronald's right. army. You're in you're a five star general, dude. I, I I ride for Ronald McDonald. Dude. Okay, listen, there were only five five star generals. <laughs> Actually, there was only one. Okay, well then it's me. <laughs> and you're, so you're a four. You guys are so both I'm, four I'm star MacArthur. generals. Right. Joss is like two with that order. <laughs> yeah, dude, his order is <laughs> so wild. he's crazy. So Devin, what is your your go to McDonald's order? Breakfast or whatever. Go, go ahead. Valid question. Hey, let's say all day breakfast is a thing, and you uh, can you can combine. Okay, all right, but so uh, chicken McGriddle, and I add a folded egg, cheese, and bacon on it. Love us an, an addition. Love yep. a custom. Wow. And then I'll get uh, I'll, I'll slam a McDub. I'll do a yes. Mc. I'll do a McBang. Okay. And uh. I'll do a McDub and a McChicken. Okay. And then I'll also do, uh, if they have it, like some McDonald's don't have it anymore, but the the club, and I'll get uh, white cheddar and extra bacon on it. Wow. I really admire the, so the, subs, the subs and ads yeah. that you're doing. Yeah. Because that's oh, yeah, how man. you know it's fresh. For sure. And then Fuck and, with it a little. The, the, the touch screen, they, they fucked up oh. putting the touch screen. And the McDonald's for me, man, because I'm, Cause you just, I'm making the just, whole custom. See, it custom doesn't order. help me just, because the my one big substitution is not available on the touchscreen. What is what it? Is it? Add Mac sauce. Oh, That's yeah. not on the touchscreen? It's not mm-hmm. on the touchscreen. They don't want you to know you can do it. Oh. But Ron told me years ago, he said, he said, he said, <laughs> he said Colin, he said, Colin, you can add this to anything. <laughs> Colin. Dude, double a, a, a double quarter pounder with Mac sauce is slams you know in and out has like the garbage fries with the the thousand island and stuff on that too so dude get fucking mac sauce on the on the mcdonald's fries that's what i'd I'd love to do that hell yeah but i'll get extra sauce on the big mac and i'll kind of intentionally let it drip out into the cardboard so that i can scoop up the excess with hell yeah you absolute menace why taco bell and mcdonald's is uh Always has your back on tour. What's your Taco Bell order? Shit. That's, that's uh, okay. Yeah, it will be. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, shit. But before yeah. that, um, I'll do a chicken quesadilla. Classic. Uh, we Arch- get a lot of those. We Have did. you noticed, Colin? Yeah. Number seven. Hell yeah. <laughs> Good to go. Large Baja Blast, of course. My man. Full sugar. Um, oh yeah. Respect. And then um, I also do a black bean burrito. Wow. Two potato fiesta burritos. Oh, wow. And um, shit. I also do uh, three soft taco supremes. Wow. Wow. Kind of ba- basic bitch, but 
They but come it's still clutch. a hefty order. That's a hefty are you, order. You, you obviously, you work out and shit. Do you worry about what you eat? Um, or not worry, but are you concerned, I should say? Like, do I, you keep track of macros? Yeah, I was, yeah sometimes I do. Um, I'm always sweating so much on tour. I I, I lose weight every fucking yeah. tour. Dude, cardio, then, the ultimate cardio is playing a set. People don't understand. Mm-hmm. It's 30 minutes of something. You're yep. doing, it's you're under moving. those lights. You're moving. Your adrenaline just rushing. Plus, we, yeah. we do work out every day on tour. And then uh, the whole everybody, the whole band. Yeah. 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 We'll all go out and head it. And then, uh, you know, also like they're, they're, I'm always changing my diet up all the time. Like in, uh, in Europe, I did keto. Mm. Yeah. Same. And um, it was, it was, well, yeah. It Cause was, they're serving you fucking, here's a plate of meat and Kaiser. Yeah. 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 yeah a nice brat, nice brat, a nice fucking fricadel <laughs> or something. I'll drop weight. Like I'll drop 40 pounds in a month. Oh yeah, man. And Crazy. even though it, even though it's expensive out of anything, like bag of jerky from a truck stop, it's always clutch. Dude, I I found a, a jerky hack by the way. Target jerky. It's the same as like Jacko Links, like the same amounts of whatever it's eight ounces or however much comes Cheap? in like a standard. Oh, uh-huh. four bucks. Oh. Huh. It's just ha- it has like their label on it. It's the, it's the Archer Farms, you know, like the Good Target gather. brand, and it's fucking four dollars. Oh, oh, that's yeah. a good deal. Excellent. Excellent little, because I love, Jerry's a perfect snack. Mm-hmm. It is. Amazing little, really. little secret they got there. Great right. find, Bowen. <laughs> Thank you. Let's so let's cut much. to the uh, the user submitted questions. I'm on Twitter. I'm still scrolling. So I got Instagram, Instagram, so and I already have them pulled up. So What Sweet. am I? Uh, is Goodbye to the Gallows a Master Killer tier album? Asks Scourge79. <laughs> It's up there. All right. It's not Master <laughs> Killer, though. My man. That's, yeah. that's a very fair, objective answer. Is there ever going to be a Sanguasugabog merch drop with the high school S in the beginning? All the Stussy S. Yeah, um, yeah. The cool S. Yeah. Yeah, I want to do that. <laughs> just I drop it online with just that, and I guarantee you'll make 10 grand. <laughs> Hell yeah. That'd be sick. Could use it. Uh, <laughs> what, is the, what is the best Corpse Grinder era Cannibal Corpse album? Shit. Okay. Ooh, that's um, a great question. That is a great. That is a great one. I, I, I have. I have album. Answer. Uh, unleashing the Bloodthirst, man. Wow. That, that's uh, that's the most brutal one. It's also the first one with Pat O'Brien, so he had mm. something to prove. Mm. Um, that one's sick. And then, dude, Vile. You know, the Devoured by Vermin. That first scream. That yeah comes out where he he's just showing you like yeah That's chris barnes do. is gone but i'm not i'm not the one you want to fuck with straight up so dude. Sick. yeah so great answer i i would say gallery of suicide just love that record album you know yeah yeah uh the twitter uh, post is gone by the way so i went all not, the way back it's not i it, i literally went all the way back it's not there does devin spin kick i do fuck yeah and it, it, it's reserved though for for homies bands and like if I see people doing weak shit, I'll fucking <laughs> I'm like all right. So all it's right, done kids. for regulatory purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it yeah um yeah He's I do spin kick <laughs> and I uh yeah I I have it on reserve but like we have this uh, sick DIY spot um that's a laundry mat in Columbus it's called Dirty Dungs. And there's a wow. lot of like art school kids, like rich mommy daddy mm. kids that think they know how to mosh, and I'll see at them dir- do, at dirty dungarees. At dirty dungarees. Okay. And I'll see them. Uh, I'll see them try to do a move that they can't do, and I'll be like, "All right, I'll show you how to do it." <laughs> he goes like, mm. "Wow." Yeah. I saw a clip right before uh, we we started the Zoom call of Ramallah playing the breakdown in Ramallah. Yeah, and friend of the show, Colin of Arabia, deadlifting the stage at this yeah. is hardcore. Hard. Did you see that? Of That's course. Sick. And he don't need to lift weights. That he was born with that. He's got you know? the <laughs> That's Ireland. That's what we <laughs> yeah. do. Well, I already found the tweet, Bo. So how? I'm better what? than you. <laughs> what's everyone's favorite? What's everyone's favorite Muppet? This is so easy for me. What's oh, everyone's yeah. favorite? Uh, Muppet? I know what yours is. What? Animal. It's not animal. Fuck you. <laughs> animal this guy says who's your favorite muppet Devin? 
Damn, mine's animal. <laughs> Is it really? No, I mean, I, I, I fuck with animal, but come on. Yeah. Bo, I thought, um, Bo, I thought you knew me, man. Yeah, I, I'd say Grover, man, because... Uh, fuck or, yes. No, no, no. Oh, is yours Kermit? I do love Kermit. Kermit I, worship, I would say I worship Kermit, but... Wait, who, who could yours be, then? Come on, man. Is it Gonzo? It's not Gonzo. I love me some Gonzo, though. I, I'd Fuck say no Gonzo is my favorite one, because Muppets in Space. It's a great answer. Beautiful story. Muppets yeah. Space. <laughs> I'll tell you mine. Yeah, please do. Rizzo the Rat. Oh, okay. Hell yeah. That makes... Okay. Yeah, He's right. funny as hell. <laughs> There ain't nobody funnier on this earth than Rizzo the Rat, okay? Wait, Rizzo I, the Rat is my favorite Muppet. What is wrong with me? Thoughts on the sold-out hometown album release show? Come on, that's incredible. That was that was really cool, man. And, you know, my uh, my grandma being there was uh, oh. it's pretty sick. And that's huge. She's got, a, she's got a new boo. His name's Greg, and uh, he's cool as shit, dude. He, We're down with Greg? Donald Greg, man, he's he first time like I ever gotten to hang out with him. He told me about when he was uh like just graduated high school. He followed ZZ Top on their first ever tour. <laughs> Gangster. And he he went to like eight or nine shows and hung out with him. And I was just like, this dude, no, this dude's sick. So yeah. and he, <laughs> he loves a bad boy riff. And crazy crazy thing, man, is uh you know people started a crop circle because people were pitting hard as fuck. <laughs> This dude comes running his back into people and uh, he's like heading towards my grandma. I see it on stage and Greg just checks him with the fucking backhand. Arm. Oh, yeah. Dude, and he I instinctively knew the nu the number one mosh move. Mm -hmm. wow. Back spinning back fist. Oh, dude, he he fucking pioneered it, I think. Dude, <laughs> capital G, Greg. OG mosh, dude. dude. Wow. I found uh, the but, tweet, by the way. I yeah, that show that. that show was uh was badass and you know volcano and uh my other band tomb sentinel got to play too which was uh <laughs> what an, isn't that the best hack is just doing all your bands on a, a gig yeah dude, dude i love i love double duty it's sick i double duty's great <laughs> triple triples where you lose me triples is not best well yeah, the problem with you triples hard. is you're either drumming singing or playing bass right now yeah. So like the two, they're very taxing. If I got to play drums back to back, it's like, damn, this sucks, but I could probably do it. See? Bass drums, bass vox. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. 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 Easy. yeah w when you are doing trouble drumming double duty, do you play one set after another or is there someone in between? I would hope not, but I've had to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I it's would, ra I would rather just get it over with. But then you're like you don't some your stamina is gone for the second one, so the second one's gonna suffer a little bit. Yeah, this is a fun question. What's your favorite BPM? <laughs> <laughs> Cody can play uh, four hundred. Four hundred? Yeah, that's a gangster right there, dude. He's he's an animal. It's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, criminal. You, man. you found it. You found a real unicorn with him. Let's hear four hundred BPM real quick. Can you hear that? Yeah. That's Woody the Woodpecker. That ain't no. Wow. The standard oh, like sense. brutal death is like 320, which is still. That's fast. Really good. Yeah. I would say one, but, 120 or 140 are my favorite. But wait, so, so here's what I don't understand. Because like, ba -ba 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 can, is, is that like blast? Yeah. Okay. Because like 400 BPM can be. Boom, ba -ba 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 it can also be like. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Like he'll do double it with, time. He'll do it with gravities. He'll do like the mince beats and shit too. Wow, He's insane. Man. Wow. Um, was was this is this is a heavy one. I can cut this if you want. Okay. Was there ever a thought for them to change their name when Cameron left? His last name is still in their name now, which is great. Still, I'm just curious if they ever wanted to separate from the bog. Uh no. Um, we're still the same band. You know, like Cameron didn't write everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, the element and the passion for the band is still in there just because, you know, they fizzled out, didn't want to do it anymore. Mm. That doesn't mean that we didn't want to. Yeah. Um, also, the band wasn't named after them. So a lot go. of people always say that their their last name's Boggs. It's Bog. So <laughs> that's a different thing. There's a that's yeah. plural. <laughs> that there's only one of the of your uh, blood sucking God. That's right. Thing. Uh, 
How hard did you? Well, you already answered this. Never mind. Uh, I want to know whatever happened to the song "Permanently Fucked." It's a B side for uh, nice. "Homicidal Ecstasy." We um, <laughs> we, we decided we decided to to use it as a B side because of the the flow, but it is uh it is a song that we're gonna bring back and play live for sure. Like the, you go. the sequencing of the record, you were like, "We'll save this." Okay. Yeah, it, I mean, it was hard. Like there there was three songs we had to we had to like cut out. And um, what's cool is, you know, we're taught. I'll, I'll just say it. Fuck it. We we were talking about using that song for a split with Devourment. Whoa! And wow. uh, like coming out full swing and putting that on on a split. Wow! If if you know we can get all the big men and stuff, yeah, be, Are they uh, in? down with it. What's that? They're in. Oh, they're totally down. They've always oh, been down. Yeah. We've been talking about it for years. Dude, that's incredible. I love a good split. God, oh, I yeah, love Sam. Split. This is an interesting question. Devin, how much money do you make off used underwear sales? <laughs> uh, in college, I made 150 bucks. Total? Wow. Or uh, per off, pair? Off one pair. How Dude, did you, that's a deal. How did you... How did you uh, Craigslist. Fine. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, it was Craigslist. And Craig did, um, Craig? he would have gave me more if um they were shitted. No, if I if I would have like if he watched me get a get a rocker mm-hmm. and I was just like, uh, I'll take your money and bounce. I just want Did you meet him? Huh? Did you meet the guy? Met him in a parking lot and I had a Sex, shopping bag of my sexy underwear. or what? What's that? Sexy guy? Decent looking dude. That's good. Really? He just had, yeah. he likes what he likes, you know. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I was I was thinking about like I didn't put any too much into it. I was thinking about kind of like blackmailing. I was like, this dude, have kids and a wife, like, mm. you know. But he's just yeah. got. He's just a kink. He's a kinky guy. Yeah. I, you in know, col- so in funny. college, I used to hit licks, man. I used to used to do shit like that, or Schemes. go to a go to a drive through and just be like, yeah, I was I was here yesterday, and you guys like. <laughs> fucked up my total order and really just like grind them and then uh that's awesome get free food and shit out of it <laughs> times were rough of it's, it's a funny thing how like <laughs> i i'm sure everybody knows somebody who's like sold underwear or done i don't know anyone who's ever bought it so it's definitely well, like hush you hush. do that's the thing we probably well, right, well, I mean, op- obviously i mean openly yeah uh, they're out there they're, they gotta be there's they're a market so Oh, for sure. All right, let's check the uh, let's, we'll we'll scan scan through the Twitter stuff real quick, and then we'll let you go about your day. These are fun. This is fun. This part is always so fun. I love the Twitter stuff. I love oh, yeah. It. How many mosh moves can you name? <laughs> name a few. Um, I just don't know if they're the same names as like. No, I want your names for them. Your cool. the Devin. So name. I call it fencing. This move. Okay. Okay. And then, I don't know uh, what that would be called elsewhere. I don't know what that move is called. Just swing. right, Just swinging. swinging. Yeah. I like fencing. Swinging for the fences. Yeah. Um, <laughs> hammer fist, like to the back of the dome. Classic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, two step in, obviously. Easy. Yeah, slash uh, skanking. You know, I call it body yeah. moshing, where you just run and jump into people. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> body and, mosh is fun. Yeah, the change. Picking up the change. Pick, Pick up, up change. change. That's yeah. five. This is good. Spin kick. Six. Look at uh, Chris Jericho over here. <laughs> oh, we got to talk about Fozzie. We do got to talk about Fozzie. Oh, we'll, we'll we'll do that after this. Um, fuck it. Targeting. Just finding them and killing them. That's know? right. <laughs> That's probably all I could think of right now. Until something Seven is comes solid. up to me. We'll see who can beat that, you know? Oh, yeah. oh that's good. De- okay. Devin's right. got the record for seven mosh moves. Seven oh, yeah. mosh moves. I love it. <laughs> what's uh, your least how- favorite mosh move? Like, uh, what's the one you see and you're just like, motherfucker? Oh, fuck. I forgot windmilling. But, uh... Oh, you got eight. Yeah. Um, record um, holder. I, the worst mosh move, I, I think, is, like, when people swing each other by the wrists. Oh, yeah, I don't Dude, like that. And the secondhand embarrassment is sucks. so bad. Quit playing in there. Yeah, yeah. Why, yeah. it's Ran for killing. Rosie shit. Red Rover. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's for killing, shit. not for playing. <clears throat> Come on, 
Uh, who moshes the hardest in the band? Said. Fucking gangster, dude. Yeah. Said, uh, <laughs> said we'll have like a bad phone call or like <laughs> he's just like, fuck <laughs> it. We also, we also like to do this thing where we're just bored. And if there's a band, if there's an opener band that like kind of honks, mm-hmm. we're just like, dude, let's just, let's just kill people to it. Fuck you know? Yeah. 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 For sure. And, and, they always get so hyped. And they'll be you know, like, they will never forget that. That's oh, yeah. Yeah. And they'll be like, fuck, yeah. Fuck, yeah. Kill it. Kill somebody in there. And then they'll come back and talk to us. And we'll be like, good side, dude. And they'll be like, yeah, you must have really liked it. We're like, yeah, as, as much as you know, but <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, it happened. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, dodgeball snare or basketball snare? <laughs> dodgeball snare, man. It's got to have that. That link, king. that reverb. Da, da, king, king. Da, da, right. king. <laughs> also, <laughs> Master of Puppet Snare is sick. So, oh, dude. But acting like oh, it's yeah. not. Who doesn't like Master of Puppet Snare? Or not Master of Puppets, my bad. Saint Anger. Oh, Saint oh, Anger. Saint Anger. Yeah. You're crazy. Oh. You're crazy. But I like that you are crazy. You know? <laughs> you're crazy. <laughs> I like that you're crazy. out there. I like you. Uh. <laughs> How do you feel? Well, this is, I mean, this is an interesting one. How do you feel being the target of every crusty death metal head complaining about poser death metal? Wah, wah, wah. I don't get it. Cause I'm not a, I'm not a poser. That's right. You know, I've uh, been true uh, about this shit the entire time. Um, I think people are just jaded because a younger crowd are getting into getting into shit. And yeah, I absolutely. think uh, when I see a kid come up to me and, He's like, yo, like you're an inspiration. You're you're the first death metal band I got into. Um, I take it I take it as like the coolest fucking compliment. There's the literally world. nothing better than that. That yeah. is the coolest compliment one music enjoyer can give to another. Exactly. And before you, it was Gate Creeper. Before you, it was Nails. There's yeah, there's yeah, a yeah. there's a never ending trajectory that you can trace it to of people that pr- were probably once called posers that eventually are like just kings of the shit. You know? yeah. It, it yeah. does seem as though all uh, out of all the like sub sub genres, that world is the most like gatekeepery. And I do I do think gatekeeping is like semi necessary to an extent. Oh, there's bands I gatekeep like crazy, man. One dude, you know how many bands I left out of the best breakdowns thing? For all of that, I could imagine. So many. I ain't but telling then, y'all. Ever. Inversely, the best breakdown things. How many people said, "Oh, I got into so much music because of this list." Eighty percent of the listeners. That's the best. That's Sick. the coolest shit. So it's all. It's all. Got it. You got to keep keep a little bit. I need a riff vault that you all <laughs> can't have access to. You know, which also like as much slack as they get from people. Man, Pantera wrote some of the sickest endings and breakdowns to ever exist ever 100 percent, and that's 100%. pantera is one of the reasons we established the one per band rule mm-hmm. right yeah yeah all right. that right because there would have been eight pantera ones yeah. on my list. i was about to say yeah. what what would you put it down to between like suicide no part two part Shed- two was my pick okay part- sick then there's oh. shedding skin shedding skin and domination throws, throws domination, rejection dude and fucking strength beyond strength oh strength yeah beyond strength becoming Fucking five minutes alone. Mm-hmm. All of There's, Primal Concrete Sledge with the yeah. God. Dude, Frozen they were, rejection they were might have honor, been man. might have been the the honorable mention for me. Really? That's insane. No one. I'll kick no, your fucking. No head one out. of. I, I saw some comments online that were bummed that we even mentioned Pantera. None I of us. Imagine. None of us are pumped. Or huh. endorsing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not proud of it. shit at all. I don't all. care. We're talking about strictly the music. Do you know how music. many shitheads were in that list of sixty bands? So many. Yeah. So many, Mostly. dude. Like, no one is, no one is into that. We're strictly talking nobody about playing them. this music is a good guy. <laughs> yeah, man. That's we why just like, we're doing it. We, we bad boy riffs, dude. That's exactly. It's 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 yeah. Never mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tell me about working this Fozzie show, and then we'll let you go for the day. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You have a good that. time? What's up? You have a good time working the Fozzie show? I did not. Okay. I, uh, about, you know, I, I loved the Christian band. Video. No, fuck that band, dude. That was crazy. That honked so bad. But <laughs> that, was, that, was the, that was the worst part about it. But uh, meeting Jericho was cool. 
because yeah. was he cool fuck yeah dude he was he was really cool which is sick we i met their sound guy because he uh he was the house guy at the masquerade in atlanta okay mm. and when we were uh setting up the stage i he reckoned he remembered me and we, we we got to shoot the shit and everything and then out comes jericho literally the first thing he says to me is like man you got some big guns like yes. that and i'm like Psh, all right this is gonna be a good day never mind yeah are you a like, rest, wrestling fan um a certain era sure yeah. the, the attitude era attitude era yeah, yeah man sure. um <clears throat> partial so, to i'm a big bill goldberg fan dude, William are you jewish G. Am I Jewish? Yeah. Partially, yeah. See? Every Jewish person out there, you know? Mm -hmm. You got fucking Goldberg. You, you got know? Bill. Absolutely. You got Goldberg. The heart, and His name is fucking Goldberg. Berg. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he proudly was like, no, I'm keeping Goldberg, and yeah. I'm going to whoop ass as He's the a nice one of the best Jewish looks, one of the best theme songs, mm -hmm. <sighs> some of the best moves. Dude. Oh, the, dude, yeah. His the jackhammer. Into man. his jackhammer. The only good spear ever. Other than the gore, but which is called the gore. The so gore is the gore is fucking. Dope. And the jackhammer is a fucking work of art. I like oh, yeah. how Ricky Stark spears. By the way, he's got a good spear on him. He makes it look good. He for makes being it look a, fucking for awesome. being small. Yeah, Goldberg. And then the like stomp thing. The bleh, oh the, like, yeah, the tongue the out haka thing. Yeah, that, that was real. Was so awesome. And then he was in that era where you have one tattoo and that's your logo forever. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. yeah. So, so dope. One dude. Yeah, <laughs> so cool. He uh oh. yeah, but yeah. Met Jericho. He was cool as hell. He did like a really cool VIP uh, thing where he played some deep cuts. And then what sucked was like <laughs> I came home. I came home at 5 a.m. Deep Fozzie cuts. Yeah. Yeah. He was playing songs that he wasn't like going to play like that night just for the oh. VIP crowd, which I thought was dope. That's okay. that's cool. That's way cooler. Oh, than yeah. meeting, right. And then uh, but what's crazy is like. I don't want to give him shit because, like, I don't. I, th I know he was singing, yeah, and I, and I know his drummer was playing. Yeah, they got tracks though. They totally know? got tracks. Yeah, yeah. Um, the one band that opened, they were fucking dumbasses, dude. They they <laughs> they took all their gear and they put it in front of the bar when there was enough room enough room in the backstage area. There's so much room there. It, it's a it's a big ass venue that I work at. Why did they do that? Because like everyone was like loading in, loading out, loading straight out, and like uh. every band had to ha had to have a sound check. And this band was late, and they were the opening band. Oh, and they uh they put everything in front of the bar, and then like they still had another half hour to like move that shit. No one else was back there. Yeah, and then they were gonna sound check, and they just decided not to. So I had to fetch it, and I was just like. And fuck these guys, you know. Yeah, yeah. And um, then but then they played and they played uh, they played some cool ass like covers. They played a De Depeche Mode uh, cover cool. and shit. And um, then uh, then this Christian band played, and <laughs> the front man has a guitar around his neck. Right. He doesn't touch it. Not, not once. He'll touch it here and there, and you could tell like where his hand was. He ain't playing the shit, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, <laughs> in the was, in ears, he's just hearing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's so funny is like they it didn't have a single cab on stage, but they had bro. They had floor wedges for the aesthetic. No, the drummer had his wedge too because he was like, I just want to feel it. It was like. What do you want? Like a thumper in your ass? Like, <laughs> like what do you what do you try to feel? Was Did it a fake any? kit? Was it a, an electric kit? It was an electric kit. Well, not for that band. Fozzie had an electric kit. What? Yeah, they did. What kind? Was it a Roland? It was a Roland, brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm, man. I'm partial to too, man. Cody. No, I'm. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, a, I'm. Yeah, yeah. I am. It'll. It should be announced by now. I am a Roland artist, brother. Fuck yeah, I did it. And um, well, I got him. But at first, like, when I heard them sound check, uh, the Christian man, I was like, are they using auto-tune? And I'm like, mm. why are the vocals are coming out pretty well? Like, they have their own engineer. Like, every every band had their own engineer. 
but their vocals were louder than every other band's. And I'm just like, what the fuck is up? Because they're tracks. And, and they're tracks. Or and the something. bass player that was uh, doing vocals too, they both sounded alike. So I was like, is it an auto tune? And then I saw them and I was like, hold on a second. And I zoomed in just so I could see their face. Yeah. And I was like, dude, they're not even trying to like pass it. Like they Full were lip sync. He would, he would hold a note, but the vocal track was already done. Wow. And it's like, so they're what just are you pantomiming. Doing? They're just on stage Yo. doing a music video. Yeah. People and then got but, killed for that. 20, oh, 30 years ago, you know? Oh dude, I, I was ready to put a hit out like right then and there. And then, <laughs> and then he, uh, but, but like before, like when we were all just like shooting the shit and working, um, he talked about this AI software that he uses to write music. Stop. Stop. Oh. Yeah. And Expose was, them. What is it? What are they called? Fuck. Se- fuck them. Seventh day slumber. <laughs> okay. Oh. AI generated Christian rock. Yeah. The enemy. <laughs> oh, dude. Huge enemy. <laughs> And I, I, it, it just, dude, it made my skin crawl. And then, like, because it is, like, primarily a butt rock venue, but, like, I'll work the shows that I want to I wanna see. So, like, I work the yeah. Sick of It All show. I'll work the yeah. Accept show. And I work the uh, the Wasp and Armored Saint show. And yeah, that's oh, awesome. I only sign up for, because sh- I'm barely home, I'll sign up for shit that I, like, definitely want to go to. Sure. But, uh you know, it was a sold out night, so I was gonna, I was getting more on the hour. It's all yeah. under the table, which is sick. Very nice. And then they, you know, they tipped me out at the end of the night. But they had yeah. this, uh, they had this like screen projection where it said like their Instagram and all of this shit is like post pictures and tag us and blah blah blah. The uh, screen oh display God. costed like three hundred grand just on that. What? And and the Christian band was the one that set it up. Well, come like midnight i'm like i'm ready to go the fuck home i've I've been here for 13 hours already got paid i'm loading out and these guys are taking forever i find out this is funny i find out they're taking forever because they found out i was talking shit on instagram really oh yeah so they were planning to do something about it or what no because because the singer didn't even show up and they didn't even make eye contact with me then God, God, they're a Christian man, so God help them. I loved the post. Something. I was, I was loving. I was having. Oh, good, yeah, dude. Yeah, I had so many on. people messaging me like, "Dude, this is really, this is dude, you're putting it Please. lightly, kind of, you know." Yeah, no, mm-hmm. this you were very kind. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, yeah, they were taking forever, so I was just like, "Guess I'm not." I was like, "I already got paid." Yeah, I was like, "Maybe I'll just count my losses and hope that chaos and carnage just does good." And I bailed. <laughs> wow. So I I left them to load up the van by themselves. Fuck yeah, good. Yeah, God helped them. God helped. God helped them. God has God. Back, God. God. You know, Jesus took the wheel. But speaking <laughs> speaking, <laughs> of, <laughs> speaking of Jesus, how was the the juxtaposition of the one like Judas, like the one Fozzy oh. hit hit compared to the other song? What a hit, dude! Sounds Great. sick. Great. Yeah. Song. yeah. Was it? Was the? Did the crowd go wild? Oh, they want to have shit. Yeah, and yeah. and you know damn well, like they're they're really just there for Jericho. Everyone knows yeah. uh and uh you know it was WrestleMania weekend. Oh yeah, right, of course. And so they're all they're all jacked up already from that. And people are at, trying to ask like Chris to like put put them in a sleeper hold for a picture, and he's like, Ah, it's not really my thing anymore. And I'm like, bullshit, it's your thing. Yeah. Yeah. You know it's your thing. Did he do it for you? He would have done it for you. Probably. He probably would have, dude. He, he did get, it for the crew, yeah. He was he was he was cool as hell. I even told we'll, him like when he we'll said the like big guns thing. I was like I was like, I hear I hear that here and there, man, but coming from you, that's fucking that's he's dope. seen some guns in his day. Oh yeah. He's a goat, dude. What's uh before we wrap it's here? What's what's the band? Where I mean you've toured with you Cannibal Corpse, you got Dying Fetus coming. What's the one where you're gonna be like, damn, I fucking did it when when you land a, a big old tour with them? Damn. Uh suffocation, man. I I I got to play with them and in Long Island. And um you know, it's you know, you guys know how it is when it's on tour you're on tour, like you're lucky if 
one of the bands that you're playing with goes and sees you. Yeah. And actually like sticks around and checks out your set. Yeah. <laughs> they watched the whole goddamn thing. And mm. when when we got done, like they were all just nodding and they were like uh they're like that's way even sicker than I expected. Cause I I hang my hat on being a live band. Like on record, mm-hmm. everything sounds sick. Kurt Baloo did a sick ass job with this record. Mm-hmm. But, you know, live you got said kicking. You got you got Cody going absolutely berserk. He plays even yeah. faster live. Mm. And then you got Drew shaking his head and you got me calling the crowd pussies. I love it. So, <laughs> That's the clip. <laughs> yeah. I would, yeah. I would have to think a suffocation tour is uh, inevitable. And I can't wait to be there for it. Fuck yeah. I don't want to talk, talk too much about it, but oh. it, it is already being ah. talked about. <laughs> I knew it. Fuck and, it. Well, that's yeah. amazing. Well, Devin, thank you so much for joining us. That was a blast. This this was a blast. Uh, we'll, we'll have you back on after next couple tours, maybe next record or something. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to it. Enjoy Chaos and Carnage. If you are listening to this, go see Sango Sugabug, Dying Fetus, Suicide Silence, and more right now. <laughs> yeah. Literally now. They're playing right, in your city they're, tonight. They're, they're somewhere. Yeah. yeah. So I'm in the green room it. right now. He's in the green room right now. <laughs> He's taking a fucking heater. Hopefully, if there's a green room bathroom, great night. Oh, yeah. We're going to lasagna Huge. it. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Stack it up. Stacker two. All right. Thank you, Devin. Thank you all for watching. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye.